It's your boy DC, it's your girl Vicky Kitty, and we're back here at EVO Japan 2020 with more Smash Ultimate. It's been so long, <laughs> but we have more Smash Ultimate. We'll have more after this, and we'll have more. To there are 3,000 people here this weekend playing Smash Ultimate. And look at this, we got a match already. <laughs> What's up? All right, going straight to it. I mean, these players want to play already, too. They're feeling just as much as we're, what we're feeling here, DC. <laughs> I but know, right? <laughs> they got a long day. We got production got a long. Everybody got a long day today. Okay. Tamari, Nobody sleeps. Tamari versus Jupo. Mm. I have yet to see a repeat matchup on this stage today. We got Ness versus Snake, and uh, I mean, they, honestly, these are two characters that are a little bit more common. I don't know. After you left, it was crazy. We had the we had the the, the piranha plants. We had the, what? Yeah, yeah, it was weird. <laughs> People yeah, just started Japan's showing weird. up. With, I mean, yeah. we were talking about that earlier on our block about how uh, the Japan scene just has a plethora of characters that we're just not used to seeing yep. in the U.S. Um, a lot of underrepresented characters, of course. But I guess when you have like a, a pool of three thousand people, you're bound to get yeah. statistically, you're bound to get like a couple piranha plants in there. Absolutely. You know? I mean, we had we had seen a similar matchup to this earlier on too. Samara just trying to use a side magic, of course, against Jupo. That's part of the problem when it comes to this matchup as Snake. You have to be very wary of the side magic, but using that down here out of shield, getting out of the PK fire. Yeah, I like this. He's uh, spacing himself very well. You saw him try to use side magnets to space himself in between the green and Snake. Didn't quite get the explosion to recover, but uh, I mean, at this point, he's recovered at least at least 20, 30 percent. That's uh, that's more than most characters can say, you know. Exactly. And Akita falling short, but getting that down smash no nonetheless. Uh, of course, Tamari not getting that ledge invincibility. Uh, PK Thunder actually coming through right there. Yeah, we right. said this earlier. This is really what, uh, what your side magnet is really what separates the the great nest players from the good nest players. You know, them using the, that uh that 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 special attack that not what it's used for. The you know? single attack. You mean the <laughs> single hit of yeah. side magnet? Of course, in this matchup, it's more than just that single hit. You have the ability to also just recover some HP using a snake's own projectiles against him, as you saw right there, sending it back to towards Jupo. And you got the ability to break the laws of physics and just start moving <laughs> in another direction. Disregarding velocity and all types of the, you know things that are just not supposed to happen. Yeah, that micro spacing using the PK fire to blow up the grenade. Oh, oh he... he hasn't played enough of that brawl mini game. You know? <laughs> <laughs> was, I forgot what duelist. He hasn't played enough duelist. That's Looks like hot potato, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Straight up, that's what that's what C4 is right there. Yeah, he tried to blow up himself against the stage so that way he could tech the stage to further recover. He hesitated. Um, he, yeah. wasn't, he, wasn't, he was unsure of himself. He was like, I don't know if I got this tech, man. You gotta believe. Yeah, you gotta believe. Uh, saw he, how right there, uh, Tamara just trying to follow from the PK fire into the down air. Not gonna be able to get the down air at least, though. And still after everything, he's uh, he's in the lead here. He has a small, has a small life lead. Uh, but Ness, of course, a much lighter character compared to Snake. And, uh, oh, I... You know, not the percent window to be able to confirm into that, but yep. nonetheless, he still tried to delay it so that way he could get the up tilt. I mean, this is the percent to want to do it. You don't want to fish for it at the same time, of course, Ness with that powerful back throw. <laughs> Snake is a thick boy. Yeah, I was saying how much heavier Snake is than the Ness, but honestly, with Ness's back throw, it might not even matter with the amount of rage he has now. Oh, oh. He, he wanted it to right there. That was fantastic, at least sending him off stage. Letting the Nikita try to talk for him, but the side magnet allowing the Nikita to not be a problem for him. And oh man! Yep. That's worst case scenario. Getting grabbed on the edge like that. No man of DI is going to save you from that forward tilt. And you got my boy uh, Jupo taking match number one. Yeah, when you're stuck at the corner like that, there's really not much you could do, especially out of getting that down throw. It's such a high percent too. There's a lot of times I saw in the, in the first match, there's a lot of times where you get a down throw and he looked like he kind of tech chased himself yeah. or it likes mind games himself. It's hard, you know. He, he, he was right. He did like an empty hop and nested a, a neutral get up and he is like too late to pull the trigger on the up tilt. It's like, you, got, you just got to believe, man. Snake players, just throw out the up tilt. Yeah, honestly, since it wasn't the confirmed right there, he just wanted to get the dash back into it. But mm -hmm. to, he, since he did second guess himself, um, he wasn't in the right position to be able to. Throw Just do what out. I do. Don't think. Just don't think. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best way to play Snake. 
that's press why, buttons. That's why I'm sitting here and he's over there. Wait, wait what? Oh, oh, okay. Oh, man. Be like All that. All right. Take cover. We got double snake coming up on stream. This is the worst. The worst, man. When you, you know, you, it, it's like if you win here, was he, was it really a victory over your opponent? Got to play you yourself. Lose, if you lose, damn, man. You just lost to your own character. Oh, man. Things are starting out uh, rough, though, for Ju Jupa. What happened? What, what the? Jupa went out. Yo, Tamari was a... Uh, Sandbagging. <laughs> he time. wanted to show him who the real. What is happening? This is wild. This is uh This is yeah. This is the winners' finals too. So. I love it. The use of the keto though, just so savagely in his face. Yeah, ironically, Snake's upbeat, pretty uh, susceptible to Nikita. <laughs> Doesn't have a lot of trajectory or movement once he's stuck in that cipher. Oh, Shades of Brawl for sure. These guys aren't even fighting right now. Yeah, of course you got to do eight percent to knock Snake out of his own cipher too. Look it's this. literal this is, minefield right now. This is crazy. Legend of the Hidden Temple. This is not Smash anymore. I love how, yeah, it's like who, whoever approaches first is about to lose this. Oh, jumping right around that Nikita. The hard part is, yeah, it's really hard, honestly, to see some of these projectiles, projectiles on stage. You know, dark background <laughs> I couldn't see it either. Yeah, I couldn't that's... see it. <laughs> He got sniped in the blast zone. Yeah, these, these, Japanese, these Japanese players are crazy, man. I love it. I love <laughs> it. This is fantastic. This is prime quality right here. Just send Nikita to the blast zone up top. Someone's going to die. All right. Up tilt's going to take Ju Jubo's first stock. <laughs> I'd be so mad if my opponent kind of picked my own snake with the snake. All right. Down air out of shield. Oh, going, coming out of the Nikita into the back air. They're, scra there's a lot of, they're definitely scrapping in this match. I feel like if Snake... Where to fight himself, this is exactly what it would look like. Just throwing Nikita in his face, <laughs> point blank. <laughs> Usually you see that option, you know, when it comes to edge guarding, but the way that Tamar and Dupo are using it. Close range Nikita's dude, this is wild. What's happening? <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny to see them, you know, kind of desperately trying to dodge this Nikita and off the sky. This is like my that. favorite match of the day. Yeah, this is pretty crazy. We had the Shotos. Oh, that was unteckable. You saw that red splash coming through from by the stage. Unfortunate. He was uh, at that threshold where it was going to be unteckable for him. Immediate forward tilt out of the shield. No fear. <laughs> What's he doing, man? He's what still in Nikita. Oh, I respect. All right, never mind. I take that back. He was sending it as high as possible. So it could follow. Yep. You know, what comes up must come down and in that worked. instance. Yep, he and it did work. Damage, so I, yeah, Essentially, I it was a bait. Ooh. I was hating, but it was a. It was a crazy play. It was like hidden missiles, man. It worked. Cro they, they both crossed up each other with dash attack. Another Nikita being sent to the blast zone. Not going to hit this time around. Ah, here we go. It, it begins again. Why are they just copying each other, though? It's like one, when, when one stops using the Nikita, the other one starts using grenades at the same time, and they start both using grenades. Oh, does the down stretch, but hits the grenade, sending him away. Yeah, who... This is crazy. The first person to get grabbed has to start dodging these Nikitas. Such a close game, too, in the Snake Ditto. That's what I'm saying, man. If I was if I was Jupa, I'd be really mad right now. Bro. <laughs> I don't know how both of these players are just playing with such a straight face, too. It's like <laughs> I like to think they're secretly having fun. Dude, I don't even know where that Nikita's oh. going. <laughs> Bro. He didn't even, you know what the thing is? He didn't send his Nikita at his opponent. He sent it in a different direction, in the blast zone, where he couldn't even see it. So he's like, I don't even know you where to go. You have to guess. <laughs> you have to guess, man, because you, you don't see the, the Unlike the <laughs> character bubble that appears when you are so high up, you can at least see yourself, but you cannot see where the Nikita is going to oh be. So gosh. he's just blindlessly sending it up there, Next predicting where he was going to go. Yep. Yeah. I mean, second time he landed it. No how surprise how right can there. you know where my Nikita is if I don't know where my Nikita is? <laughs> Jupa, Jupa now getting off Snake is like, I don't want to do that again. That was wild. Now he's going back. Oh, oh, ah. He's thinking, though. Pri that was prime entertainment right there. All right, so we got the Snake Ditto staying here on board. Jupo versus Tamari <laughs> looking like a minefield out here. Jupo, honestly, you know, it's the winner's final, so he went through his pool. Probably putting put in work with Snake against all his opponents. And then he gets to his last match, his winner's finals match. You know, wins game number one, and all of a sudden his opponent just transforms like a ditto into him. <laughs> what do you do here? 
You gotta play yourself. Wow, that down smash though, clipping him out of the cypher. You ever seen that that meme where this guy is pointing a gun at himself? And he's like, trust no one, trust not even yourself. <laughs> it's literally the equivalent to the Spider-Man meme where they're both pointing <laughs> yeah, no. at each other. <laughs> Sending the key to up. Oh wow, the double coverage though with the up smash oh, as this, well. This is just straight up cheating because I can't even see the up smash on this stage. Close range Nikita. That's how you uh, get in your opponent's head. Of course, these grenades also just dealing so much damage on their own. The grenades never staling. This is why this is why I'm not a snake player, because I know eventually I'd have to play this matchup. This is terrible. Uh, MVD does it, man. MVD probably sitting home right now. All right. Well, first of all, he's probably asleep, I should say. <laughs> but if he was awake, he'd be watching. Uh, he's this a night owl, but he does get the down throw <laughs> into the up tilt confirm. Leads don't last very long. Leads don't last very long, Vicky. In this, not, in this not matchup. with Snake. Not with Snake, especially in this matchup. Wow. Hitting the grenade in the process of that. And like, yeah, like I said, they're scrapping. They're not afraid to take a grenade to the face as long as they hit their opponent. It's also nice to note that the longer that Nikita's out, the stronger it is. So while he's dancing around Nikita up into the black zone, it still is hits harder than usual. I'm so mad right now. I'm so upset. Does, does all, a lot of these are just... Where, where are you going? going? <laughs> He doesn't want to play on the stage anymore. Uh, He's tired. He's tired of having to fish for this. You know, Jubo getting the key to Dow back still on the play zone. I know you guys can't see the player cams, but both these players are stone faced right now. Like super stone faced, like super serious. It's, I'm dying. I'm, <laughs> I'm absolutely just gone. And the key right. Finally, he got, he got out, hit because yeah. he called it the key of his own. I don't know what he. I don't know where he's thinking his Nikita was going, but. Smash, Smash Bros. Hot Potato. It's crazy though, you know, with all the grenades being thrown, a lot, they haven't been getting hit by a lot of grenades. And the Kitas for sure, the Smashes, yeah, but the grenades, they've been doing a pretty good job of avoiding them. Yeah. It's essentially just a, a juggle trade going on with the grenades. We're hanging out the circus. Nikita again going? in the blast zone. It's like you don't do learn your it. lesson when you get hit in the blast zone. <laughs> Jupo taking the set. I'm uh, sorry, Vicky. Oh, that was a hard one to. T <laughs> that was a hard one for me. <laughs> I'll never be a snake player. <laughs> that was. That was a lot. Yeah, it's the exchange of explosions. I mean, just I think it's just the irony that Snake is so susceptible to Nikita, his own attack, and he's just he's such a magnet for that. Yeah, yeah, special. You know, you would think, you know, why why not just, you know, not go so high up towards the blast zone? Well, you know, you're still going to get hit by Nikita regardless, even if you don't go for a high recovery. So at that point, at least try to juke out the Nikita and do it up in the blast zone. Because, you know, if you can't see it, your opponent can't that see it, as you mentioned. That was some next level tech. So it was like, you know, you're having it out there trying to cover exactly the direction where you could presume where Snake is going with the Cypher. I think there was at least one, at least one time where someone set a Nikita up there and, and just like on the control stick, whatever, dude. I don't even know where <laughs> I'm going. It might hit you, it might not. I lose nothing here, okay? Uh, Vicky, tell us who our next two opponents are. We got how I'm feeling right now. Ah! Uh -huh. Versus Shino. Versus Shino. Actually, though. I, like, I liked how production was pronouncing it. Ah! <laughs> 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 so sudden. No, th there's actually like seven capital A's yeah. on screen. Like it, it's not a subtle ah. It's uh, it's definitely like a ah. Uh, yeah, I see the Shizue plushie also. So it might be a uh, might be a Shizue player. Another character we don't really get to see that often. Um, that character was wild in the first like week of this game. I thought that character was gonna be nuts, like super campy, just really hard to deal with. Uh, yeah, and then people, people learned how to shield. If you learn how to shield, a lot of people just stop playing her. She was very lackluster. I mean, compared to Villager, obviously way completely different character. But, you know, if you really want to play an Animal Crossing character, Villager just being the character that you would want to uh, rely on compared to Shizui, where Isabel's is just not the strongest overall. Um, I do think when it comes to certain matchups, though, you have characters like Peach who likes to rely on Float, um, giving away her ability to shield and being more susceptible to getting hit by the fishing rod, or rather grabbed by the fishing rod. Yeah. Well, let's see. I mean, I just saw the plushie. Maybe, uh, 
Maybe not even a Shizue player. I'm sorry if I got everybody excited for that one. Yeah, I was uh, looking up some players earlier, and uh, I'd seen, you know, a player who specifically had some results under Pitt as a representative and then just didn't play Pitt, played uh, Daisy instead. So. It's all a lie. Again, well, it's like, like, it's like saw, the mix-up to no mix-up. We saw Tamari, you know, pull out that snake out of nowhere, so Japanese players just play everyone. Just don't sleep. Just don't sleep. No sleep, yep. I think that's prime counterpicking, too. What if you just go whatever character whatever your character. opponent <laughs> plays? You just, like, you, they ask, okay, what character you're playing? Whatever character like, you're whatever playing. Whatever you play, man. <laughs> this is the prime ditto. <laughs> what stage you strike? Ditto whatever master. you strike, man. <laughs> 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 There's that for winning. It's like, wow, okay. I feel like you got the advantage. You actually don't. This guy's just the ditto master 101. All right, what, what characters we got here? Shino over there on the right side playing Ness. And uh, oh! <laughs> yes, indeed, playing Shizue. God bless, man. Animal Crossing coming out in just, uh, what is it, a month? Two months? Coming out in March. I'm excited. Two months. Yep. I'm glad they pushed back Final Fantasy VII Remake. Yeah, so that uh, way I people can could give their time into yeah, right? Animal Crossing. I think it was on purpose. Everybody knows Animal Crossing is about to take over the world. Yeah, I mean, Cyberpunk, though, coming out very shortly, I believe, like, before uh, Final Fantasy VII. So, I don't know, man. Skin companies want to take all my money. I'm it's tired a, it's of a this. Hard, it's a hard year for gamers. It's actually insane how many games are coming out, um, popular games. Oh, so, yeah. Oh, more. It got delayed further, actually. So, yeah, September. September yeah. now. It was it was at first in April, and April, then yeah. and then they pushed it again to September. What's crazy is that they're pushing only disc one. <laughs> hey they're guys, pushing only, what? only disc one. <laughs> Don't forget, there's a disc two. There's a disc two. Yeah. Wow, I, they're probably right. gonna release it as like a. D I don't know. I don't maybe know. They're, they're probably thing. gonna yeah, do it like a, a DLC. Thing. Give me a give me a break <clears> in between. <throat> I'm still trying to finish my backlog. Got mad games to finish, man. Yeah, it's actually insane. This year is gonna be insane for gaming overall. Gamers rise up. Need some Mountain Dew. <laughs> some Mountain Dew, some cup noodle. All right. Evo Japan 2020. We got another match coming at you guys. We got ah, ah, versus Shino. Ness. Uh, sorry, Shizue versus Ness. <coughs> Let's see what kind of Isabel player, kind of Shizue player, my view, uh, my view that uh, is. Of course, you're gonna see the side magnet come through as well in this matchup as well. What does side magnet work on? Uh, it's just gyroid, right? Just start? The side magnet only works on gyroid explosion, I think. Doesn't yeah. Work on, doesn't work on doesn't work on bear. Also pellets, I believe. Does it? I, I, I could be wrong. I, I guess I've never really thought yeah, about that interaction, but. Yeah, so the, I mean, as well as just for movement overall, just yeah, a good tool course. in this matchup whenever it comes to projectiles. Playing a little, little slow. Not a lot of fares coming out. I thought, you know. We've seen a lot more of those. It's kind of the Isabel Shizue special, Bills your special. Yeah, of course, you know, we don't really get to see this character very often in general. You know why? It's because that jab is unfinished. What's up with that jab? I, I know it has its uses, but man, it's. Sometimes you just can't use it. It's like a rubber toy or such. I don't know. It does get that side B fishing rod. Command grab, of course. Well, not really, actually. You get to shield it at the same time. Got to be very wary of it. Yeah. That back throw coming through. We were talking about that earlier. Even when you're losing, you can still be winning with a nice back throw. Oh, oh but the Gyro Void Rock. Machina. <laughs> and there's that fair you're talking about. Yeah, ball and fair. Pulls out that stock. Even game between these two players, I think it's going to be kind of a slower, more methodical game. Big guy. Big guy got a hot take. I really like two out of three. I think it's. I think you know you have uh, less time to adapt, which is which can be a good and bad thing. But I think it's. Just, I don't know. It's uh. There's a lot more on the line. I feel like you know, game one is so important. It helps determine uh just the pacing of what's gonna happen in game two and just how fast you can adapt. Yep. Which so that's the case. Try to go for that fast fall down here, but the PK Thunder actually hitting Chizui away. The moment that you saw she was trying to land there with the down air. Let's see, you know, one of the. I used to play Villager a lot in Smash 4. 
And uh, sentiment that I've heard from a lot. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. The I, I jab just you, doesn't work sometimes. He was stuck on the ledge there, but it's still like, <laughs> where is he going? <laughs> Nowhere. Sometimes you get punished for hitting someone with your jab. All right, so the thing about Villager and uh, Shizue, you know, also is that I feel like when you're down the stop, it's the, really hard. He yep, pushed him push into him it. Into the gyro. You know, when you can't run through your opponent anymore, at least utilize that. Managing to actually push Shino into the grounded Lloyd rocket. I think it was a. I think that was a great change in this game. Yeah, that's a little extra layer of strategy and things like that you couldn't you couldn't do in Smash. Yeah, I mean, body Smash blocking, so especially in the air, kind of a could get a little tricky when it comes to microspace in your aerials. Keeping him in place and dashing away, making sure he doesn't try to overextend. I think he was, yeah, I think he was trying to call it a roll right there. Didn't get what he was looking for, but uh, things have changed. All of a sudden, oh no, sorry, he's still he's still down quite a bit. Apologies. We well, try to get that up smash out of that PK fire. Using PK fire to get rid of that grounded Lloyd rocket. I think honestly, sometimes he's putting down gyroid. Just to make sure he doesn't have to worry about PK fire across the stage, but up, up tilt will take out first. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> He's happy. Yeah, that's how you feel. That's how it'd be when you beat uh, villager players. You get him camped out, and you, you get the W. It's like, yep, I did that. It's tough to do that against a character like Ness, though, especially with the PK thunder mm -hmm. and the uh, knockback that that move has now. I was going to say, sorry, I've been trying to finish this thought for like 10 minutes now. Uh, Villager and, and Shizue by extension, it's just really hard to bring it back from a deficit. There are characters that do really, really well when they're in the lead. But, you know, if you're stocked down and your opponent starts to snowball, it can be really, really hard to bring it back because, you know, all of a sudden uh, the character's not all camping, but I feel like slow play and staying away from your opponent can be very beneficial to the character. So when you're down, it's very hard to kind of get them in a situation where they're coming towards you. All right, got a warm up too. We have Ah, kind of just uh, slapping himself, just you know, kind of keeping it with. <laughs> what am I supposed oh, to oh, say? Yeah. That? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that up tilt so big! And try to call out the, the air dodge too with the forward smash. I'm getting distracted by some of uh, Ah's hand movements here. Oh yeah, no, yeah, he he's, he's, can't see the player cam, but uh. Just being a little aggressive. Very animated play. Yeah, he probably goes through controllers like, like nobody's business. Oh, wow, the drag down from that. Avoiding that up smash right there. Try to cross him up, but Shino's just doing such a good job at just maintaining stage control. And here we go, the back throw. At least setting up the situation to get that Lloyd Rocket out. Although he does get sent to the opposite side of the stage. Acting as a body block, essentially, for the PK Thunder, too. Yep. This is what I was talking about, man. Not a, not a camping character, a uh, full camping character by any means, but really likes to stay away from their opponent. Throw out those fair. I mean, the character was made to throw things at you, you know? Oh, oh he ran into Hard read, like, very hard read. Actually pushed his shield pretty far, too, to help him uh, to help keep him safe. That's why you saw him throw out the jab, just in case he was going to... Shino was going to run up and try to go for the punish. For that that pot actually snipe, yeah. almost, yeah, almost sniped him right there. Like Link throwing pots all around the house here. Oh, but the Lloyd Rocket, he tried to avoid it, but jumped right into it. Yeah, I think that's one of the coolest things about Isabella. You can call, you, can, you know, you can, you can kind of call the Lloyd Rocket whenever you really want. Uh, using B reverse pocket to change its trajectory, kind of like what Snake does with grenades. I'm actually surprised we haven't seen a lot of pockets coming out from uh, from Matt. Aside from, you know, the B reverses, but I think it can be useful against PK Fire. I really like seeing uh, as like usage of the, the jab one and to just try to wait it out. Keeps him in place, knows how much how much further he can take it before the shield gets pushed enough for him to get punished. It falls up from the Lloyd Rocket with the up air. Yeah, that's frustrating. This is where Villager and Shizuwa shine. Being up quite a bit and all of a sudden you're getting hit by 16 Lloyds. 18 fairs, nothing is working out in your favor. Yeah, but definitely one thing's for sure is Ness does not struggle on racking up that damage. Definitely a heavy hitter. 
Yeah, I want to see how uh, maybe slow it down and kind of start playing the camping game here. You have quite a lead, and it's, it's uh, I feel like he's squandering it a little bit, getting hit a lot, like trying to move in on Ness. 82% has taken now. He was up, it was up quite a bit to start off the stock, and now uh, starting to get a little bit more even. In fact, I think he's getting he's getting close to back throw range. He is, and it was a little tricky because uh, from that down air that you saw, he really needed to get that up air, but unfortunately didn't space it right. But at least he does get that fair. You see Shino just kind of waiting there during his angel platform invincibility. Ending hit right there of that nair. Trying to go for that, for that grab right there, but Shino avoiding it. Well, this guy just got the same nair. Oh, does a jab two of his own to get that back throw. Definitely not going to be enough, and there's no rage, but that back throw will do it. I like that. You see how Shino's getting a little aggressive. Doesn't want, uh, doesn't really doesn't want Isabel running away with that stock. If you even out the stocks, then uh, the camping doesn't really matter as much. Oh, wow. Sitting him down with that down air. Of course, again, the Lloyd Racket acting as some sort of body block to prevent that PK fire from being any trouble. Honestly, it. it Maybe it's helping a little bit because you get the PK fire kind of exactly where you want it to land, you know? Sure, you know, as an active hitbox. Yeah. Who falls up with the up air? Try to Man. clip him with the dash attack right there. I've seen Ash get hit by so many PK fires, and I'm not saying it's I'm not saying it's easy by any means, but I think your pocket is an option. And having yeah. a PK fire uh, at your disposal is, can be very, very helpful in a lot of situations, you know, especially when you're playing the camping game. He slid with that, too. I'm not too sure if he was just trying to contest uh, Shino by the ledge before he was able to get back. And keeping him off stage with the Nair. This is the moment of truth. Oh, oh and he was right he was in, in front, front of, him of him, too. Him. Wow. That was such a close game. Yeah, very close game. And uh, it's frustrating, you know, when you... Be, be, that's that's another part of the re that's another reason why I think Villager and Shizue players are a little bit few and far between because you can play these long, intense, mind like mind breaking matches that you just lose. You know, it's like a twenty minute set that you play your heart out, you camp in your opponent, and you lose. It's like well, you have to you have to work harder. You, you know, to, like it's you have, work, you have to work harder and longer. Longer is the, the most important thing. It's like these are long sets you have with every set you play. As long as you recognize that that's the path you want to take with the character that you're playing, then by all means. But it's just it could be heartbreaking when you're having a close game like that. And quite unfortunate, he was in front of him. But that backer is so big, and yep. it's essentially like the entirety of Ness. Um, uh, it's hard, you know. It doesn't matter where you are. Why even call the backer? Just call it neutral air like it is. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know though. that character can be a little peeving for some people, but uh, nonetheless, super solid overall. He does have his weaknesses, of course, yeah. especially if you uh, you know, take away the PK Thunder whenever he's trying to recover. There's really not much he could do other than just fall to his death. But yeah, you Like know. I said, the, the only time we saw Pocket coming out from that uh, was to be reversed. You know, no, didn't True. try to do any PK Thunder steals from snipes. like his recovery when yep. he was off stage. We didn't really get to see him off stage too much, other yeah. than the fact that he did uh, clip him with the dash attack, the double dash attack, throwing the pot off stage yep. and spacing it properly, but still allowing him to get back for free essentially. Uh, it's a hard life for these shiz away players. Don't worry, your time is coming in March. You get to chill on your deserted island. Yeah, relax. they're gonna buff your character anyway. They need <laughs> yeah. to. <laughs> I, I like to think they buff characters when a uh, new DLC comes out. Or like That'd be hilarious. Yeah, I'm a huge advocate for... That would be for, some serious marketing. <laughs> I, I'm a huge advocate for uh, just buffing, no nerfing. I would love every character to just be broken. I, yeah, I think I'm, I'm definitely more on the on the camp of, uh, you know, making the, the not-so-great characters a little bit better. But I think it... I think it, you I think should kind always of take a look. Patch you should always on. take a look at some of, the strong, some of the stronger characters and see what you can do there. I was telling Ken earlier, I think... You know, I don't think Joker's broken by any means, like a lot of people would say. But man, he gets arsen pretty often. I wouldn't complain if the meter was like a little bit, a little bit longer. Or honestly, just uh, his counter overall is is kind of Smash Four corn counter size. It's it's pretty it's a good big. Counter. It's a very good counter. It's it. I mean, I'm talking about Tetracon essentially. I'm not even talking about the, the counter where he he saves up Rebels on the meter. Guard, yeah. 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 There you go. Rebels Guard. Just. Absolutely humongous, reaching from below the platform. It's just, it's massive. Little things like that. But it, in, a, in a perfect world, every character being broken just makes for 
a perfect Marvel vs. Capcom <laughs> game. <laughs> I'm down for this game to turn to Marvel. People want Dante. You guys don't know what the hell you're asking for, okay? You guys want the game to be Remember, wild. They wanted Bayo too, man. Yeah, he has a... Uh, listen, Dante has not been bad in any fighting game he's ever been in. <laughs> His kit right? is like... It, it's a, I feel like it is definitely impossible <laughs> to make Dante bad with the kit that he's provided in his game. Yep, so be careful what you wish for. I'll say that much. You guys wanted Persona? There you go. Remember back in the day, people were modding Persona music in Brawl? And now you got, now you got Joker tearing through your game. You guys asked for it. You guys got it. Joker's super sick to watch, though. Yeah, yeah I think he's, a fun, he's definitely a fun top tier. I like him a lot. I definitely agree with you. that I don't think he's, like, insanely broken by any means. But, of course, the tiers are there. They exist for a reason. What I'm really saying is buff Kirby. <laughs> please, All right? Please. <laughs> I but don't think I asked for much. In a world where Kirby's also just really good, it's definitely, like, he's, like, evil, man. Everybody says that. Everybody's like, you guys don't want Kirby to be top tier. It'd I just be his aerial speed that they would need to fix. Yeah, just make him a little bit faster. I don't think he'd be a, I don't think he'd be an obnoxious top tier. If they don't make it super ridiculous, um, I think if they just keep it, like, a few points in terms of his airspeed, then I think he'd be way better. He's still his jumps don't go anywhere. Light. Yeah, he's still incredibly light. If they made him, like, Yoshi airspeed, we'd be fine. Oh, my God. Wait, hold <laughs> on. <laughs> Stop right there. <laughs> All right, so we got the Wario and... Dude, what is happening? Young, young Link. Link. Is this real? I haven't seen a Young Link since, like, Melee. <laughs> There's still a few in the U.S. Boy, where? All right, a lot of people are, are actually switching to playing nah, Toon yeah. Link more often than yeah. Young Link. I mean, I see tweaks. I see tweaks Young Link every once in a while. I see a... Uh, yeah. Oh, well, let's see what they can do. We got Yamato versus Daikon here. Yamato, of course, a Wario player. I care to see it a little bit more often. I feel, I feel like Wario is a secret, very secret. I don't even know if he's secret, secret top tier. No, definitely, definitely top tier. Right. Yeah. Sure. Between, Some people between, wouldn't agree. You know? <laughs> no, between Gluto's uh, representation and then Tweaks playing a lot of Wario and using the baby waft right there, quite interesting. Maybe he just wanted to get the damage, seeing that he could just rack up the waft all over again. Letting time pass, but the conversion of the boomerang into fair from Young Link. Maybe, oh. yeah, maybe he's thinking he use Waft early because he'll be able to bite some of these projectiles, but I don't know. I don't know what goes on in the mind of these Wario players. I was going to say, yeah, even the display that we had from Tweak at Glitch, Wario definitely showing that he's a pretty solid character on his own. I think this likes comboing into that RP from Young Link. That's usually what we see to end up to end stocks, but it works on stage as well. Now that bomb coming in clutch for Daikon, though. Getting out of the bite. Oh, it's the crazy. arrow sniping it, him out of the bite. It honestly looks like Wario's taking a lot of hits here, but if you look at the percentages, it's pretty even. Although, yeah, Yamato is down an entire stock here, though. He still has to climb up from an oh, entire stock down. Right. Yeah. I'm so sorry. Baby. No, 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 it's all you good. You got me. I wasn't he, <laughs> it, was, it was quick. You blinked, man. You just I blinked. I didn't even. I'm like, yo, this is looking mad even. <laughs> the rising it's down here, even though, at man. All. I'm sorry. Making sure, yeah, making sure that he, that he could not climb from such a deficit. Converting out of the boomerang into the fair right there. A dash back into grab. Where did that bike go? Did he eat it? Honestly, this Daikon's just doing such a good job at trapping Yamato. Yeah. Gets hit by that late hit of the Nair. Not going to set up for anything, though, as he does do a rising Nair on his own to get back onto the stage. Man, you know, I, I don't, I really just don't see a lot of young league players, but is this the aggression? Is this what this character is? This character's got mad knockback. I guess I'm just playing too much damn net play. You know, the young one players on net play, they're definitely not as aggressive as this. <laughs> a lot more boomerangs, a lot more arrows from across the stage. It's his follow up. The boomerang, it's a. Arrow? Okay, he's trying to go for the fancy schmancy combo, but you're going to cost him the stock. I mean, you know, risk and reward, he could afford it at that point. Yeah. You know, it's two stocks ahead. I don't think he cares about that first stock at all. That first stock put in way, way more work than uh, really needed. That, yeah, that's going to take it. Man, what a, what a game number game. one for Dakon. What is, uh, what do we do here? What do we do here, Vicky? Um, not go for a high recovery and get hit by forward smash, I guess. But <laughs> jokes aside, it just definitely looked like Daikon was just exceeding in terms of projectiles and just trapping him, you know, especially around the end there. You saw the bomb on stage. Um, you saw Yamato trying to get back. Whether using the bike to get back horizontally, 
it just was difficult for him to to avoid the boomerang to arrow combo that we saw a lot. You know, Young Link doesn't doesn't struggle on getting kills, honestly. Between the drag downs that he has and his powerful aerials, it's definitely difficult and something that Wario loves to do is hang out in the air. Yeah, I really thought that Yamato would be running circles around him though, you know, obviously with that air speed. I thought Doom Link, uh, sorry, I thought Young Link would have such a hard time catching him with any of those projectiles, but uh, he's just been so aggressive. He really has given Yamato a lot of space to breathe. Yeah, hopefully, you know, this game is a little bit better this time around. Of course, we would like to see from Wario just holding onto the waft, and he, Yamato just wasn't able to take advantage of one of the most powerful tools that Wario has, and that's holding onto waft and just letting that be. Uh, a punish, not a punishing tool, sorry, a pressuring tool on its own, just knowing that he has it on board. Yep. Yeah, running full stage, creates some uh, space between the warriors. See, he's also, trying to bite the projectiles, yeah, he's too. he's trying. Didn't have a jump right there. If he had gone for that back air and it landed, that actually would have been a fantastic position for Yamato. Very similar to game number one. Starts off looking kind of even, and uh, once once Daikon gets that first stock, it's really out of there. There you go. And that's exactly what Yamato was trying to do, trying to eat that boomerang. Yeah, is it worth though? You know, as soon as he as soon as Daikon sees that, he starts moving forward. Yeah. You lose uh, you lose whatever stage control you had. You're all of a sudden at a disadvantage, oh and then you lose your stock like that. Yeah, I mean, he was at high percent right there too. So the, the twinkle toes coming through. The drag downs that we were just talking about earlier from Fair. Jumping right in there, punishing him, throwing out the boomerang by the ledge, using that bite command grab, and going for that down air. It's a perfect situation that he really wants to be in. Oh, unfortunately, though, missing that nair and allowing him to get back for free. Not even to get back for free. He got back for, like, negative money. He saw that damage he got just for a uh, aggressive recovery back to stage. Yep. Get a 97% has Wario on the ropes now. Oh. And not even that. He gets the entire stock. I want to say he got that entire stock just from that recovery. That's crazy. All right, well, unfortunate outcome. Yamato barely has been able to really do much against Daikon. Yeah, I mean, you got a lot to study, you know, when you go back and watch the set. Again, able to take out the first stock, but just like game number one, too little, too late. It's a huge mountain to climb here, and I don't think he's going to be able to do it unless he, unless he transforms into a different person. Although right he does have Waft, but unfortunately, I don't really see him having the opportunity to use it unless it's to take this stock. And yeah, try to hold it on for at least a third stock, but here we go. Saw the follow-ups. Maybe he is going to try to hold it on to it for the third stock at least and try to build it up, or, you know, who knows. I don't want to say it's impossible, Vicky, but we haven't seen a lot of combos coming out from, you know, Yamato. He hasn't really gotten to start much of his uh, much of his game plan. It's just been Daikon coming at him 100% and him trying to respond. Yeah, very but, true. Using the bike to try to negate that, but falling off right afterwards. Unfortunately, getting hit. It's definitely not over until it's completely over, but... Oh, wow, that dash attack right stopping short from the arrow, but he does use the waft to take out the second stock. I mean, we're, we're talking about it now. He's not going to hold it on for the third stock, but it's definitely going to be tricky to try to come back from this. Just eat. Keep eating, man. You can get another waft. Just keep eating. Now, he could honestly just do it out of medium waft, too. That is another option that sure. players do tend to ignore, or not necessarily ignore, but forget more than anything. They're too focused on the full waft instead. This is a... Uh... Not impossible. Absolutely not. Ooh, with the double arrow. Seems like Daikon kind of struggling here to find an opening to get that KO. He knows it's a. Uh, he knows he's at the right percent, but he needs to find the actual right place and time. See Yamato getting much more aggressive here, knowing this could be his last stock of the set. Oh, but hitting the bike and uh -oh. gets the grab. Try to get the pummel enough, but definitely not going to do it. But oh his my, own bike! My, his own damn bike. <laughs> oh no! Betrayed him. I. The bike doesn't move very fast when you throw it. You know, he just. He got a lot of airspeed as a warrior. I can. I don't even know what happened there. It could. It could have been that he just wasn't expecting his own bike to be thrown at him. But at the same time, know. he, he, he was in a weird angle for the bike to. It looked like the bike was just going at a weird <laughs> angle for him to get hit. Either even if he air dodged, it wouldn't put him in a great position. You got so much optimism, Vicky. I love I, it. I love <laughs> it. I think my dude just froze up in in the moment. <laughs> I always, I always give the benefit of the doubt, you know. These yeah. players, if they're, they're in winners' finals for a reason, yeah, man. Yeah, it's true, but man, that was rough, you know. 
I, what I've noticed a lot in, in Winner's Finals, it seems like a lot of people just kind of hit that one matchup where they're like, damn, I wasn't ready for this, you know? Happens. We've been seeing so many different characters on screen, and you're going to see many more coming up very soon, so don't go anywhere, guys. Currently, we're going in an ad break, so we got some more matches. Come back, ladies and gentlemen, to EVO Japan 2020. We got some more matches coming up for you guys real soon. It's been quite a long day for everyone. Everybody, Players, everybody prod, involved. I know, but, you know, we still got so many more matches to go to before we end the night for you guys. Um, of course, more matches tomorrow as well, which I feel like the nitty-gritty is going to come down tomorrow where we're going to have, a, you know, more of a talent pool showcase what's up. But speaking of different characters that we got <laughs> playing here in Japan, we got Piranha Plant. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. And Game & Watch. His name is not Piranha Plant, all right? In oh, Japan, man. he goes by Hakun Flower. I told you, I'm not doing this. You got to say, you gotta <laughs> say Paku and Flower. You guys missed it. Paku. During the break, though, I got to say this. During the break, these two were RPing. <laughs> on they weren't even doing the button shake. They were just messing around. Like, they were literally they were like, doing some weird this, stuff. Like Game & Watch watery. Pro I don't even know, dude. I don't it even know crazy, what I saw. It was crazy, man. They were, they were being too friendly. I'm glad. No, it's, that's great. You know, it's good sportsmanship coming from our two players. No, you got to beat each other up. That's how this works. <laughs> Anyways. All right, but yeah, this is actually not the first Pakun Flower I've seen on stream. We saw one earlier. He actually put in a lot of work against this, uh, I think, a Wolf and Fox player. And I feel like in this matchup, it's a little tricky, of course, uh, since Game Watch could reflect the ball as well. Yeah, got to be super careful. You can, um, I think he can bucket the, the poison gas and reflect the ball. Mm -hmm. For some reason, bucket becoming a reflector when it needs to be. But yeah, uh, Pir sorry, Pack and Flower, I think, honestly, one of my favorite DLC characters, you know. Uh, a free one, not part of the Fighter's Pass, but and kind of forgotten by a lot of players, to be, to be quite honest. Yeah, it was like the Mewtwo effect, essentially. Oh, there's a bucket that you were talking about. Yeah. But I think he's just fun to watch. I think he's a cool character. I think he's a, he, has some, he has some obvious flaws, but his Nair is awesome. He has a great Nair. His projectiles are pretty cool. Poison Gas and, um, and the Spike Ball. You gotta, yeah. you gotta deal with it, you know, just have to deal with it. His down B is weird, but I like it. This character is weird, man. I think, it's, I, think I like him because he's weird. <laughs> Definitely a character that is unorthodox and not very seen often. Because, of course, with the setups that he has out of Patui right there. Oh, but the reflect that we were talking about as well with the bucket. You'll, you'll call it Patui, but you won't say pack on the flower. Uh, I mean, isn't that what it is? Isn't that what do you want me to I say? Th the yeah, spike ball? It's got, I call it spike ball and poison <laughs> gas, all right? Like just, they like, know what I'm talking about, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, hiding in the poison gas though to actually go follow up with that, but up smash coming through. Yeah, up smash is great. His up throw is nuts. Any attack that he has where he bites you is great, man. Getting caught out a lot of his rolls though. Has some super armor during his down B. A lot of people forget about that. Yeah, he'd be pretty tricky, but you know, risking for the biscuit. Going off stage with the key, had nothing to lose there aside from just taking a few percent with the poison gas. Should have been uh, should have been warming your hands instead of RPing before the match. That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. I uh, I haven't. Seen, I don't think he's gotten the full bucket yet, but I can only imagine how much damage that. Does. Actually, I don't know. I think each individual hit of the poison gas isn't actually that powerful, so I'm not, I'm not really sure how strong the bucket would be. Nice edge guards, but going for that high recovery this time around. Yeah, and landing on stage with his upbeat actually doesn't have that much recovery depending on how you land. Mm -hmm. So it is an option for him to go high like that. And using the up tilt, something I don't really get to see that often from Game Watch is utilizing that move. The up tilt to send uh, Norio off stage oh, with the fair bomb actually landing. Projectile of his own. Yeah. All right, we got some smiles too. These are good sports here. Kind of a good, uh, good first match there, Mr. Game and Watch. The ire of many, many uh, players in recent times. Yeah, of course, shout out to Meister with the recent recent PGRU just coming out. Meister's a cool guy, man. I like Meister a lot. Yeah, really, it's honestly. Really, it's really kind of annoying to hear that he's getting hate. Guys, get over it, man. He's been playing that character since all of Smash 4, so yeah, I this isn't anything with tears. This is him playing the character and really displaying how talented he is with the character as well. It's like hating on Sam Sora for playing Peach. My dude's been doing it for a long time. Just, yeah. Game number two, let's see if Norio can figure something out. This it's is actually, sorry. No, no problem. This is, honestly, this is just a difficult matchup, I would say, uh, for Piranha Plant in general. Yeah. 
Well, many matchups are difficult for Rock. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're not wrong. It's specifically, Game Watch just has the tools to deal with a Patui, the Cloud as well. Yeah, not, you know, some characters have a reflector, some characters have absorb, but he, he has both. Literally. Uh, I will say this is, like, this does not look like it's a winner's finals of a pool, so uh, this is just a pools match in one of the many, many waves of pools we have. Yeah, I mean, his neutral is kind of cut in half there, not being able to use Patui, as you call it. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I, That's what it is. I'm not gonna sit here and lie to the to the viewers. I've never looked up what his attacks are called. All right. I, I'm like 99 percent sure. <laughs> he, he even d does the patooey noise. There. Yeah, oh, I mean, but the uppy snipe. I totally believe you. Okay. If you could be lying to my face right now, <laughs> I would believe you. Well, avoiding that would be quite tricky to catch landings. Goes for that rising nair. Looking for him, though, does get that cross up nonetheless. One thing I haven't seen much coming out from uh, this pack of Flower, it's short hop dare. Ray has super low recovery and it's up for a lot of combos. It can be a little risky to use, no, if your opponent's waiting for it, but it's an option. He likes using this down B a lot. Gotta be careful because you still have, uh, I believe you still have a hurt box when you're sending your down B out. Yeah. Of course, the uppy out of shield, frame three. One of the most complained moves, complained about moves at least. And it's not even just frame three; it has that invuln also. Yeah. Wow, so that's like, that's the that's old witch twist, you know? Like Smash four. It actually gives me very much uh, when it comes to just being out of tools, something very similar to that. Oh, the drag down nair into the down tilt. Of course, the perfect position of what Game Watch really wants you to be in is above him, and that just, this upbeat just sets up for that perfect situation. All right, now we see Norio kind of struggling. Uh, he's doing a good job of holding on to the stock oh, here, wow. but I was insane. He actually had gotten in between the hits of the Nair uh, before the Delta came out. He was able to get the grab in between. Scary here, kid. Like one of his, uh, one of his very, very good tools to KO people or even edge guard them off stage oh. here is his, uh, is a spike ball, and it's not something you just throw out against Game & Watch, unfortunately. Oh, tried to to camouflage himself right. within the poison gas. He starts to use the patui and actually gets him perfectly by the ledge like that. If it doesn't work the first time, just do it again. Can't reflect it twice. I mean, he can, but he didn't. <laughs> he did. <laughs> he just hold it. <laughs> And here's the perfect edge guard. Bacon has no weakness, man. I'm <laughs> telling you. What do you? Has, there's a lot of characters that just have to hold that. Nothing they can do about it. Yeah, you could also mix up the timing on it too and the distance. Yeah. Love that fake spike ball and instant falling, like fastball. Oh, that's oh, right. because he extended his response. DC, oh, you called yo, it. That was wild. You called that it. That was definitely some doll seam right there, man. He, he he's been doing that every like all game in the last two games. Throw on the down B off the stage to kind of check his opponent. But like I said, it has a hurt box as well. You cannot just throw it out like that. You're not safe. You're I've not never safe. seen anybody get spiked from half a mile away though. That was <laughs> nuts. <laughs> really good showcasing. I mean, between Piranha Plant and Game and Watch. Pakun Flower. All right, man. Listen, you gotta respect the man's name. I, I like that name better, honestly. Pakun. Pakun Flower. <laughs> I can't. Pakun. <laughs> That was fun. That was a fun match. Um, great ending to uh, a great, some great Pakun flower play. And Game of Watch was looking clean too. Yeah, it's, I was mentioning just overall the matchup could be pretty difficult for Piranha Plant to deal with uh, Game of Watch. I mean, half of his sets his setups were just negated yep. by Bucket, and he kind of just got to hold that and try to approach different ways, or at least try to mix it up, which he was definitely trying. But I, I mean, he, he, we saw it once. He did a double spike ball after his first one was reflected. Usually after you get something reflected, you expect your opponent to not do it again right. immediately. But uh, not very the case smart this play. Time around. Yep. Our next match coming up, Sasebon versus George. And George is also a Japanese player. I like that. It's just George. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That's, yeah, it's pretty crazy. You don't see a lot of, uh, it's usually the other way around. You got those American players with the, uh, the name like Sasuke or something <laughs> like that. 
I was, I was, I see this meme like sometimes where it's like, you know, Jap or sorry, American people are really into anime, and then uh, like Japanese people are really into SpongeBob or something like that. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if, it, I I don't know if it's that. real. I don't know if it's I real. I did not <laughs> see that. But that's hilarious. I wonder if that's true, man. Maybe Japanese people are like really hardcore American animation enthusiasts. Honestly, being here in Japan for my first time, I could definitely say that that not only is everything so innovative, but I just see anime everywhere I go. Yeah, this is a... It's like the trains <laughs> have its own anime mascot. I'm just like, what is happening here? It's like, do you want to go on this line? Here's the anime mascot for this line. Do you want to go on this line? Here's the anime mascot for this line. It's like, yeah, yeah man. It's almost like it's almost like a joke where it's like, you know, you're into anime. Why don't you go to Japan? But yeah, like you should. It's <laughs> a lot of anime here. Important to know that's not the only thing here, though. So make sure, you know, if you're into Japanese culture, you like anime, uh, do everything. You know, try everything. There's a lot of good food here. A lot of uh. Yeah, it goes beyond, good, good it goes beyond stuff the fashion, man. That's the one thing I, I yeah. definitely have to say about the Smashers here. The fashion is on point. I'm not used to this. <laughs> Everybody's dressed really nicely. A lot of people wearing business suits just to play their, their pools match. Imagine what they wear to top eight. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, he'd be flexing. Yeah. I don't want to hate. I don't want to hate on anybody. I'm definitely not calling out anybody. But, um... I don't know, man. I feel like some Smash players on Twitter be like, yeah, I'm looking for a sponsor. And they show up to a tournament, play on stream in, like, cargo shorts and a, a dirty it's, white it t-shirt. Worked, it worked for Mars, DC. <laughs> he, he, it's his style, though. You know, he pulls it off. He wears the, the pajama pants. He looks comfortable. Got to sponsor a comfortable-looking guy. That's one way to rep apparel. <laughs> All right, we got Gikoga versus Joker. All right, I may say Gikoga because it sounds cool. That's a cool name. I like that name. Uh, again, you guys can't see the player cams, you know, during every match. But uh, you know how when you see the Japanese players in America and they're traditionally and always pretty, pretty serious. They take their matches very serious. Every single match is like that. You know, every once in a while you get a smile and a laugh. But uh, for the most part, these guys are taking these matches very, very seriously. I like that. You can earn the button check, man. It was when they're not RPing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was a free tournament to enter, but uh, man, everybody wants that W. Yeah, again, I mean, when you have to cap the event at 3K, it's so intense because, you know, you got overseas about, like, what, almost like 2K for entrances for Genesis. DreamHack, I believe, is also going on in Germany. Like, Is that this weekend also? That's what Virum had said, so. Wow. You know, Virum always keeping track with the European tournaments going on. The boy from the UK. Yeah, you know, I got no blocks with him this weekend. I'm sad. Wait, man. what? They got me. They jammed me. It's cool. Game number one. This All is right. George. It's, it's so jarring to see that name. <laughs> but it's, uh, it's a Japanese player, I assure you. All right, Gekoga versus, uh, versus Joker. What do you think about this matchup? Gekoga, a character we don't see very often. It depends on how many times we see uh, Sasebon use counter, honestly, to rack up that, that meter percent as yep. well. So far, so good. Yeah, it goes without saying. It's like how often is how he going to get our Yeah, <laughs> I mean, that's why we, we may see a less of a usage from the water shurikens. Mm. That's something that we like to see from Greninjas, especially when it comes to recovering horizontally. Got to watch out. But our big daddy Arsene is on board here. Like that new thing they added to this game where a lot of characters were, when they're about to do something to blast them forward, you'll see an arrow in front of them. Mm -hmm. So uh, Gekoga, of course, has that when he's doing his up beam. Yeah, I don't, know, who that is. I don't know if it's for the opponent or for the player. But Maybe for both at the yeah. same time. I mean, it's a double-edged sword at that point. <laughs> Trying to go for these downers consistently by the ledge. Not really getting as much damage as you would probably like to see from the Arsene, but still, nonetheless, still holding a lead. Yeah, didn't do much with the Arsene, though. Uh, it's going to be a little bit harder here to close out a stock. He's not going to get Arsene for a while. Possibly not until next stock. I don't know. No, it definitely depends, too. Seeing a lot more of a reserve Joker than what we're kind of used to, trying to go for that backer. Oh, does get the drag down, but not going to really get much off of it. Here's Side that. B coming through. Yep. Clean 13% right there. It's, it's 
kind of a slower paced match than what I expected. I thought a lot of these, yeah, I thought, you know, of course both these characters kind of rush down uh stocks would be flying off the shelves, but now our first stock almost uh quite a bit into this into this game here. I guess you know once you don't have if you if you get that early arsen and you're not able to close out the stock then you kinda Joker does have Martharitis sometimes, you know. Martharitis. I like that. really struggles to find the find the KO. Wow, and then gun down into the back here. Uh, good attempt right there, but George not gonna let it happen. He does try to contest him below these platforms with the up air. And now your opponent has Arsen at 0%. You don't really have to worry that much. You know, you're not gonna lose your stock here. Definitely have to worry about the Aegons, of course, but it seems like Sassimon's getting getting to Arsen at the wrong times. Well, again, another attempt on the down air. Being a little too greedy, honestly, I would like to see some more back airs in general, just not only with the damage output, but with the amount of pressure that we've seen a Joker's use on the ledge, especially from MK Leo, whenever he goes for this barrage of back airs. Try to cover the rolls and neutral getup, but the fair coming through, allowing George to still keep his head in the game here. Yeah, George is, uh, I don't want to say he's getting lucky, but man, our set has been out at the wrong time, the wrong place at the wrong time at all times, you know? <laughs> oh, I like that water shuriken to contest that side B right there. Ooh, interesting angle to get back onto the stage and get stage control. You can pretty much safely play this, uh, play this stock without worrying Ooh. too much about losing it, yeah. And that was a scary situation too, because if George had angled that differently, the water, the water uh, wood box actually would have just pushed Sesebon away, preventing him from recovering. But that was not the case right there. He still was able to come uh, back. Getting a little too greedy with that third up air, and that's going to cost him either the stock or a ton of damage. All right, now we finally see Sesebon on the right timeline. Our going to be coming soon, and that's going to be the end of his stock. I don't think the stock's going to last much longer after Sesebon uh, deck. Kind of just letting him get back onto the ledge for free right there. Maybe just trying to wait for our send to come on board. Yeah, like that. Not overextending. Just waiting until his uh, his win conditions in effect. And there it is. So it does get the back throw though. The clean yeet. Yeah, that's. <laughs> you didn't even need our send for that, man. Come on. <laughs> I think. Uh, I think. All right. Hey, I'm not Sakurai, okay? But I think it'd be cool if you could choose when you call our send when you have the meter. And then he's there for X amount of time. I don't know. Maybe that'd be too broken. I, that seems absolutely broken. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not buff him. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. I'm not bad. I'm not bad. <laughs> oh, the double, double parry, parry, though. Parry on the double hit of the down here. Yeah, that was really great. Not going to really get any much off of it, though. Definitely has to find his way to clean his stock fast. I mean, at the same time, Sasebon has just been doing way too much damage on George for George to be able to retaliate back. First time we see the attempt on the counter to rack up meter. We've seen George kind of land on stage with Upbeat a couple times there, get punished. Uh, I guess he really just doesn't want to go low. Uh, I would like to see that more. I really haven't been able to see him utilize his uh, running running dash, de dash deck into the up, um, up smash. Down tilt two. Micro spacing, a little, a little shimmy backwards to make, him, to make sure he's in the right position. Man, he's playing. He's playing out of his mind, but he's just down, being down a stock here is so bad. You know you're gonna have to deal with at least like two more ascends, even if you're able to close out the stock. Ooh. Oh, and that was a little tricky too, because it kind of covered where he was gonna recover. Yeah. But anyways, you got that backer coming through. I don't know, man. It's he is he's playing well, but that, I mean, this is the tier list in effect. You know, we're we're visually watching the tier list here, where Gekoga is a great character, but he's. It's just not his greatest joke, you know? Yeah, I, I still think he's solid overall. I kind of feel like um, Sasebon isn't really utilizing Arsene to the full extent that we've seen Arsene in the past. Uh, he honestly could be doing a lot more damage, but kind of sticking to playing safer on the neutral side. Mm -hmm. um, although he is racking up a lot of damage just as neutral vanilla joker. Doesn't George, on you... the other side, I feel like just hasn't really been able to get anything started. Yeah. I think it's uh, he doesn't want to sleep on his opponent. He's playing it safe. He knows he can play a safe Joker, and uh, once once Arsene is out, then he's start looking for KOs. I like that though. You know, get it. there's a lot of players here. A lot of people you gotta scout out. Can't just go ham unless you're MK Leo. But he does. That's a different beast on his own. Yeah. Game number two here: Sasa Bowen versus George. Let's see what he's figured out from the game number one. 
Uh, so uh, you mentioned it. We only saw one water shuriken, I think, in the in the first game. We saw a few, but it's just it wasn't working. Or one, one charge one. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it honestly looked like it was clipping a uh, Joker's side B at the same time. Again, Arson already out, man. That was less than 30 seconds. He took a lot of damage, and in that Ooh, instant, there okay. we go. The comeback, a different type of game going on here. George getting that up smash. Yeah, I like that. Not afraid of the Arsene at all. Knows I'm only at 66%, man. You need a couple more hits to, to make me scared. All right, again, high recovery on the stage. I think he doesn't want to have to deal with downwards gun. That's the problem. He knows that can easily gimp him. He's like, I'd rather just land on stage. There's a downwards gun and oh, actually encounter. Him? Yeah, the fair. He saw he wanted to get I hit like by the that. fair. Yeah. But the patience from George not giving it to him, but he still gets Arsene anyway. Yeah, that's uh that's top tier privilege, man. You miss your meter charge. Oh, oh, trying to go for the edge guard, but miscalculating the fact that Sessabon actually goes for the high recovery and gets that down air spike. So you know what's hard about that is that he was just kind of doing it. He wasn't really expecting that down air to connect. That's just something you do as you're moving back to stage. You put some pressure on he your opponent. He was underneath him. I mean, like, why not at that point? Yep. And, you know, since he was by the ledge and he had to let go of the ledge, he, he was going to be forced to re-grab anyway. Yeah. Trying to go uh, go a little too far off stage and unfortunately miss that edge guard, costing him his stock. But it's okay. He still manages to get that fair and is still a stock ahead. Man, yeah, he's looking much better in this game number two. I was talking a lot of trash about the tier list, but he's, uh, he's proving me wrong. Trying to predict the high recovery yeah. right there, yeah, with the up B. He's been doing it a lot, you know. We've seen a lot of up, high up Bs on the stage, so I'm surprised. Who does go for that footstool on the shield? Oh, this is really George's game to lose. He's gonna have to make a pretty big mistake to lose a lose an early stock here and not be able to close out this, this last stock for Joker. Arsen about to run out as well. Well, I like the patience right there, actually stalling out the get-up attack. Kind of baiting George to come and approach him before he uh, lets it rip. Oh, and actually just going for the very high footstool. Totally don't think that was on purpose right there, as he did get sent up when he was trying to go for the fair. Fall in fair one, leading to a little bit more damage there. Oh. All George needs here is to find this uh, find this one hit. This is a scary situation. You got Joker, though. He's a, he's, a, he's a light character, but he does have the rage, and you know Arsene's going to be coming up soon. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely does want to be contested with Arsene. I mean, he is going to rack damage. Oh, that was a little scary right there. I've seen, like, two STs within my last block, so. Yeah, right. Dude, people just falling and just fast falling. A lot of, you know, a lot of players haven't played on stage this big, so uh, yeah. it can be a little nerve-wracking getting on stream used to like a small local or maybe maybe just even playing online you know oh just get the drag down this is what i'm talking about the damage is racking up and arson meter is peaking the the momentum is completely shift right now arson is ready but he is at 146 how much is arson going to help him in this situation i don't know man i think he's liking this rage he has just needs one or two more good hits here and then he might be in back air range oh, oh. wow the two frame right there with the down to yeah, a lot of people saying it our Sen up is actually worse than normal Joker up Wait, Whoa. where are you going? <gasps> Whoa! Oh, he didn't he punish for... him! All oh, right, but all the right. forward throw. No, he all went right. for the cheeky uh, water off the stage, you know, when he's in free fall. Yeah, but he, was fa he, he wasn't going to hit the off stage. He was either going to get back on the ledge or fall back on the stage. And he didn't, he didn't like, react fast enough, but at least <laughs> that forward throw was It was a good enough. try. I like it. Yeah. That, that would have been a good KO. Of course, when you get by water in this game, you go upwards instead of uh, actually to the side. So he, he still would have had that drift. It was kind of cool, though. I want to see more of that. Where are the Mario players at? Where's Anti? Playing Lucario. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> All right. George made the adjustment. I was hating. I was wrong, guys. I was wrong. But he's back in this. Now we got to give him three. What's going on? No move? What? I, I guess. What was that? <laughs> Starting out patiently. I don't know. I don't that know if it was just a bait to try to get a counter in, but um, 
Of course, you, you know me. I'm giving the benefit of the die. I always give the benefit. He, he got hit, man, so I don't know. <laughs> he was holding shield at first. It wasn't too sure if it was just trying to bait him out. Yeah, that was weird. All right, well. Anyways, though, if, if uh, George does keep up the momentum that he had in the last game, I mean, Sasabone definitely was bringing it back, and he was controlling the, not only the stage, but just the pacing of the game yep. for a solid minute and a half until Arsene came back. He continues that momentum. And this and is it again. Arsene popping early, but Gekoka's nowhere near KO percent. So how much how much help is this really going to be? Yeah, uh, maybe trying to rely on just racking up the, the damage that side B has in general. You want to get that percentage lead at least. Take take advantage of Arsene when he's on the board. Oh, man. And this is looking really good for George. Closing out that stock. Only 57%. On his first dog, and he ran out the arson meter too. What happened, man? This is a different George. I wonder if his friends call him George. I don't. You know what? I, I can't even. I don't know. I know nothing about the guy. Maybe his name is George. You know, I'm totally fine with that. That's fine too. Oh, there you go. Rebel guard coming through. Tetracon. You know, again, even uh, all right, even as, as these two stocks finally go by, I feel like very different than what I was expecting. You know, just looking at before game number one, I thought, again, I thought the stocks would be flying. I thought both players would be uh, moving and grooving, but uh, it's been kind of a slower paced match than these two. Very methodical play from both players. We're falling on top of him with the Nair, but actually just air dodging away. Not gonna try to contest him off stage. Instead, just trying to try to figure out what he was gonna do by the ledge there, but still managing to catch him as he tried to jump in. All right, this is uh, this is Sasebon's final stock here, and he needs to make it count. He has a lot of ground to cover. But of all the characters that can do it, this is a joke. This is a joke. Oh no! Oh, oh no! He jumped. He jumps. <laughs> Send that back. Yep, He's coming back. Oh, missing a tech on the platform too. What's Zasabon is falling apart here. I'm gonna try to catch this two frame right there with the forward smash. And, you know, I can't say for sure, but it seems like Zasabon getting a little desperate here. You see him throwing out some attacks. Just hoping they hit. Yeah, as he called it right there. Probably getting a little greedy to just try to finish up the stock as he is at 76. You know, we saw it once in game number two, but since then I haven't seen any falling forward air, forward, you know, forward air one attempts, which really leads, you know, not not a lot of nairs coming off from Joker, not a lot of down airs. It's, it's a little strange. Well, unfortunately, messing that up, he definitely wanted to get the up smash direct there. And, and yep, wow, that is definitely yep. going to be it. That, that's he tried to go for it first, the right before that, but he managed to actually utilize it out of the confirm um, the second time around. So, you know, if it doesn't work the first time, you at least try it the second time. And he managed to do it. Pretty George. pretty solid. George coming back after losing game one. Yeah, he had a slow adaptation, but <laughs> game two and three were all him. He set the pace of the match. And game three, he just ran away with it. That, that was crazy. I've never seen uh, never seen someone just make those kind of hesitations so quickly. It looked like a completely different person, honestly. Yeah, honestly. he, he It was a time where Sasebong was honestly around the end when it seemed as, as if it was too late trying to come back from a pretty big deficit, but I feel like he wasn't taking advantage of the amount of percent that side B deals with. Yep. I know I, I know when Arsene's on board, you want to go for these back airs, you want to go for these edge guards, but at the same time, you can't ignore how much damage side B does in general, and yep. I feel like he could have used, utilized that a little bit more. We see from MK Leo do the elevator, where he likes to do side B and then jump side B, and it, you know if you actually space it properly, it does land, and that's a lot of damage. So there was a Joker player on stream earlier when uh, me and Ken were commentating, and all he would do is side B. That was like his entire neutral. And it worked. He got so much damage. He got, I mean, I mean, that's like it, it adds up so much. You know, it's like 100% of damage over the course of X amount of stocks. So uh, I, I don't know. It's the only thing you got to work into your game. There's so many different ways to play Joker, man. I, you know, but uh, George coming out on top with that Gate Golga. Let's see who our next match is. Looking like it's going to be Moshi versus Naki. They're two Japanese players. Uh, up until now, you know, in most of my blocks, I've seen a lot of international players, a lot of USA, a lot of we saw France, we saw Germany, we saw Australia. Uh, this block is looking very Japanese, though, which is cool. Totally fine with that. 
As per usual, too. Yeah. Wouldn't expect any different. Of course, here, e Evo Japan. 2020. It's crazy. I can't believe it's been three years of Evo Japan already. Gone from... Uh, Has it really? Yeah, we were in Tokyo the first year. Uh, and then... Uh, uh, that was that was fun. That was really cool. Then we went to Fukuoka in last year, which was it was a trek. It was a it was far. It was far, but it was nice. It was nice to go to a new area. And now we're in Shiba, which is awesome, man. We're just traveling all around, traveling all around Japan. I said uh, next year they should do Evo Japan at the base of Mount Fuji, where Toyota's building their new yeah. smart city. <laughs> smart city, smart city Evo. Smart city Evo. Yeah, happen. that's next level. Mm -hmm. Take advantage of that new crisp convention center. That's probably <laughs> going to be auto ran by all the, uh, all the robots. We're going to be replaced with robot commentators. I'm telling you, we're almost out of a job, Vicky. Dude, they're going to have AI robots just AI, commentating. Yeah, AI for commentary. AI commentary. <laughs> they can predict. We, <laughs> can you imagine their predictions are uh, just ridiculous? Like, what if they could uh, like process what the what the players are already pressing on their controllers and just they're able to preemptively talk about? Yeah, that's. <laughs> Stop. I'm done. They just know everything, man. <laughs> That'd be next I'm level. I'm scared. All right, guys. This is uh, this is going to be the final block of Smash Ultimate today here. I got a couple more matches for you guys, and I don't know what time it is on the uh, on the American side of things, but, I mean. If Early. You're not, yeah, if you're waking up, just not waking up, or just not going to sleep, I don't know where you are, but there's a lot of Smash going on today. And it's right. currently uh, almost 7 a.m. on the East Jeez, Coast. It's 4 a.m. in Seattle. That's nuts, R Us. You don't have to remind me, man. <laughs> We're all tired, Vicky. It's all good. We're going to push through, though. We got a couple more matches, like I said. I knew what I signed up for. <laughs> <laughs> they gotta, there's got to be like a day zero where we all just. We're all just like relaxing on stream, getting used to jet lag. Yeah, no, I didn't have that. I came in last <laughs> <laughs> I came through <laughs> off the streets ready. All right. Palutena. It's my boy Moshi over there. Versus Lucina. Of course, two characters that we have been seeing quite often for today. No surprise whatsoever. Very solid characters overall. Three, two, one, go! Are we going to do a butt check? All right, butt check first of all. Uh, Vicky, how's your EVO Japan 2020 been so far? It's been fantastic. I've met you know, so many people. was able to try some uh, ramen some earlier. Ramen, yeah, a little burn Super your mouth fire. a little bit. Yeah, I burnt my mouth. Vicky, Vicky ate an entire gyoza, <laughs> like a, a fresh gyoza, like right off the right off the steamer. That thing was a million degrees on I the inside. I thought I could handle it. She didn't even bite it. She ate the entire thing. That was nuts. Oh you guys God. ever seen a cartoon where, where a character eats like a hot pepper and their face turns red? Smoke comes out of their ears. Out. Yeah, that's exactly. I swear to God. That's what, that's it what happened like. to me. <laughs> I, I, my tongue actually still burnt. That that's, sucks. You should, yeah, you you might be missing a few taste buds, honestly. Things, I'm are, things are never going to taste the same for you. <laughs> it happens. But uh, it was good. You know, it was you so great. a lot of good food in your future. Yeah, I mean, that's that's one of the prime things that when you go to Japan, you get to experience is the food here. You know, aside from how awesome the culture is, the food is definitely one of the top tier things that you would want to uh, immerse yourself in whenever you come visit. Yeah. Uh, if you haven't been already, I suggest going. I know it sounds weird, but go to McDonald's. McDonald's is wild here. <laughs> it's great. It's just it's like McDonald's if it's like American McDonald's if they cared, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I'm being real, man. All right, game number one, Moshi versus Naki. Uh, man, Palatina, we've had a lot to say. A lot of people have had a lot to say about here in recent times. Also, just like Game & Watch. Yes, and oh, speaking man. of which, the Shield Breaker is this, is immediately stock? at the start of the Woo. game, not even Woo. taking 1%. Woo. That was kind of hot. I like that. Call out the perfect right there. All right, let's not get too antsy, though. All right, yeah. the set's not over yet. Naki, you had a good first stock here. Make sure you put that one in your uh, in your reel to show the sponsor, potential sponsors. <laughs> but you got you to gotta close out the set too, man. Oh man, he didn't realize she's saying all her uh, all her stuff in Japanese too. So you now that explosive flame. Mm -hmm. Those are the rising up airs. Don't want to sound like a weeb either, but man, I think she sounds better in Japanese. 
Seems to be the case for a lot of the roster. Yeah. I like the dash back into the down tilt. Great spacing on Naki's part. Ooh, getting a little antsy there, jumping from the ledge, getting hit by Politana's back air. I like that delayed up B though, knowing that his opponent's probably gonna try to clip your clip your two frame. Teleporto! I like that. I'll turn around grab. Go for the down throw. Not gonna get the fair. Maybe trying to turn around to get that raw backer. Yeah, he didn't, he didn't go for anything, man. He he kind of delayed throw, it a little bit. Not throwing nothing. Maybe expecting his opponent to air dodge in or something. Yeah, also, just conditioning overall. Just trying to wait it out. See what he was going to go for. Yep. Ooh, nice. with the back throw. Yep, going to be That able to is do definitely it. the yeet, man. There's a couple yeets in this game, but that's that's one of the best. Dude, I feel it in my soul whenever Dr. Morrow does it. <laughs> all right. It's not looking good for Nike, but this is game number one. This is where you get all the data. And he had, to I'm sorry, not looking good for, uh, for Moshi. Uh, but he, had, he had an early early stock in the shield broken that, you know, not every stock's gonna be like that, so. Oh, wow, he got the drag down, but unfortunately, since Moshi, uh, since uh, Naki was behind him, he wasn't really able to do much from it. Using that platform to uh, teleport around it laglessly. Trying to get that platform cancel. Nair out of shield, covering all options, yep. And that's the auto parry after you parry one, uh, the first one. Yeah, unfortunately the last hit though is still setting him upwards, getting that extra damage. Playing the, playing the slow play game, just trying to rack up some damage. Probably gonna look for another back throw here, honestly. Yeah, it's doubling one bit, also that auto reticle just calling out jumps, and that is definitely something that Lucina loves to do whenever it comes to approaching, that jump fair. Throwing out the auto records, I thought he'd be able to. All right, short hop back air will do it. I definitely thought he'd look for something a little bit more. I, I guess back air is safe, you know, as safe as it can be. You, got, you have that in -ball. But I thought the back throw was coming for sure. Oh, wow, so much damage just off of what one nair into the up air. Uh oh. And here we go, one more time, take me for a ride. That down tilt, not gonna do it. Of course, we've seen that down tilt two frame a few times before. And Moshi is bringing this back despite an explosive first stock from Naki. Yeah, this is what I was talking about. You can't just. Uh, <gasps> no, no way! Oh, no, it's jump, Lucina. It's Lucina. Oof. It was still very scary. I'm sure he was also a little nervous himself. Ooh. Landing on stage. And look at yo, what the back. Oh, to that was it right there. Could have gone for the down throw of the back air. He was DIing away too. Maybe it was because of the percent. He didn't want to overextend at the oh, same time. Forward smash on stage. Back throw from the middle of stage is not going to do it. But another one of those. I don't know if he can take it. Oh, challenging. Oh, my gosh. These both these players are crazy. Challenging the attack after uh, after down tilt. Oh, going for that quick teleport back into the ledge. Oh, that re-grab, too. Not going to get punished for it. Auto reticle, though. The, the oh, Schuberger actually. Out of shield will do it from across the stage. And he's got his hand on his head like, damn, I threw I that really one threw away, that. man. Yep. That's that's heartbreaking, you know? Quite just funny to see that that shield breaker actually made Lucina low profile, but underneath the auto reticle after yeah. it had locked on originally. <laughs> but yeah, that Nair, that's a high percent coming through. All right, man, just channel your inner stock number one. Just do it again, all right? As long as you, uh, as long as you get another shield break, you can still show it to your sponsors. <laughs> Make a whole like montage of the show break. <laughs> <laughs> All right, boys, boys and girls, <laughs> I should say. And uh, game number two, we're going right back to Hazardless Smashville, my, my least favorite of all stages. <laughs> Smashville was great, and then I guess the moving platform was too much of a hazard for us. And people suddenly stopped wanting to play on, this, on the what map I'm that saying, everyone man. was playing on for yeah. like four years. It's not a coincidence, guys. <laughs> Like I said, though, you know, we, we might have a very different game if we don't have early shield break, like we did in game number one. And honestly, Moshi was still able to win it, so I don't know what's going to happen here. Oh, wow, he air dodged out of that blast it's zone, good. something that I don't really see a lot of players utilize, but of course, it allows you to extend your hurt box away from the blast zone and closer towards the stage. Obviously, got to make sure you still have that jump on deck, too, but. Yeah. Oh, man, Moshi not letting him play. 
for the last 30 seconds. Yeah, definitely making it difficult for uh, Naki to really extend with even a lead. Here we go. We got the up air elevator going up. Trying to meet Reed, maybe a roll onto their towards the stage. Sean's just spacing them out so well, calling out his jump ins. And Moshi, after getting that shield broken, awoke a beast inside of him. He's playing completely different. There's a fade back with the Nair. Trying to go for a lot of these grabs, too. He keeps running up, grabbing into spot dodge, and I feel oh, like Moshi man. is definitely catching on to it. Dude, I don't want to. Again, you guys can't see the player cams, but uh, Naki in his chair, rolling his eyes, sighing, saying, man, I'm down two stocks here. It has all fallen apart for me. It's not Game's over not yet, over though. Yet. Yeah, it's definitely not over yet. Man, just to see the difference in his play. Oh, pred predicting that explosive flame. I like that. It's a little parting shot as he's fallen past the ledge. I could throw you off guard, too. You're not expecting it. Oh, goes for the neutral getup, but again gets punished for another jump. Listen, if you're not going to break his shield, Moshi is an impenetrable wall. Oh, I like the spot dodge. Instead of trying to go for the grab, ends up spot dodging and then does the forward smash instead. Yeah, but look at that. How he had to get the stock there. Run up, yeah. charge, forward smash. That's the only opening he could find. Yeah. And that kind of thing's not always going to work, you know? He was utilizing his tilts a lot more within the first game. We're not really seeing a lot of the sliding tilts either that we see a lot of Lucina trying to micros microspace themselves with too. You can definitely tell Moshe's in his head a little bit. The way this match is going is kind of in his head. And, uh, wow, that was a fantastic punish. I mean, he, he only did uh, the first two parts of the side beat right there that just was able to grab him right in between because he delayed the third hit. Yep, well, the, <laughs> I love the sportsmanship, man. Both players still, uh, you know, after the match at least, having fun and smiling, laughing, handshaking. Uh, but, man, that, that was rough. That was rough. Happens. Happens especially, you know, when, you, when you're able to come back from – such a, a strong showing at the very beginning of game one should indicate to you that, like, you know, it's never over, man. Despite you being down an entire stock in the first 30 seconds of the game. Yep. Of course, Politana also being such a strong character herself. Um, he was just doing a really good job at calling out all the jump-ins. And that's something that Lucinas sometimes do tend to autopilot. It could be a little difficult when you want to mix up whether you're going to do falling nair, whether you want to do rising nair. Falling fair. It's, either way, you're still in the air, and Palutena obviously excels when it comes to her nair. And a lot of the times we saw him extend with up airs too. Yep. He really got a lot of utilization from his up airs and basically just dealing more damage that way. He was playing peak Palutena. You know, he was doing all the Palutena stuff that you, that people complain about, and it was working because it, it's 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 all solid. It's all it works for a reason because it's all good. You know. Oof. I feel bad, though. I feel bad. I don't know. I was watching the player cam that entire time, and every time Naki would get hit, he was like. So I felt for him. It's an like auto tilt. It's an auto tilt at the same auto radical, but auto tilt instead. <laughs> auto tilt, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got to lock on. <laughs> That's hard. All right, next match coming up. Looks like we got Gaia versus Konbu. Give me some wild characters, guys, please. Give me another Pakun flower. I feel like I can compensate Pac and Flower all day. How about you? Uh, Patui? You sure? Patui. <laughs> <laughs> now, I don't know if this is the Gaia that I'm thinking about, but if it is, your wish of strange characters that you don't really get to see that often will come true. Ooh. Potentially Little Mac. Oh, Little Mac no. that is very good, by the Little way. Little so you told me the Japanese Little Mac. Dude, is this is right? like every U.S. player's like worst nightmare. You telling me that even out here in Japan, people are trying to be the low tier heroes? <laughs> what? Yeah, I'm, I'm messing around. I'm messing around. That's like, all that's day today, man. Yeah, all day today. All day today. Still, I love it though. Still no Kirby though. Have you seen a Kirby at all today? Nope. Nope. <laughs> I mean, because people. People want to win. Listen, yeah, people, <laughs> people listen, we'll win. play low tiers. We're not going to go that far, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like to take care of myself <laughs> and my well-being. Care about my mental health. Mental health is important. I'm not going to play Kirby, okay? Give me anything, man. Give me, like, a – they should make his forward smash, like, 
Sports match is pretty good. They should make it better. He crosses up. <laughs> Thanks, Mickey. <laughs> it's, you're right. You're right. He's fine. No, no buffs necessary. It's Sports a match crosses it's up. It's literally his speed. <laughs> his speed needs some work to make that character work. All right, check this out. I got you. I got you, Sakurai. Inhale. Can't shield it. <laughs> Why? I think that's totally normal. I think it's just make it command grab. No shielding inhale. Make it like if if he inhales on you, you should get your You should you like should like Wario. Lose. Yeah. Uh, should not be able to lose this ability from getting hit. You know that's RNG in this game, right? <laughs> it's there. It's actually RNG. There is no percent base like it used to be. There's no yeah. It just kind of randomly happens. You could get hit by the weakest move. Yep. At any percent, even like a five percent, and sometimes you could lose it. Yeah, that's uh. Well, that's there you go. So not, none well, of that. Well, tears exist, man. Tears exist for a reason. Did tears you know exist. that? Um, <laughs> I love what we're just randomly talking about this. Uh, well, one guy setting up his me fighter right now, so we got a lot. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> uh, you know what? He's crouching. He has this idle animation when he's crouching, that makes him like. Oh, yeah, uh, he yeah. like looks at the camera kind of, and he then changes. he looks. It shifts his hurt box, and yep. it actually it, it goes from you not being able to grab him because he's crouching under your grab to he him shifting his hurt box and allowing you to grab him. It's actually been like that in a couple games now, so it's just upsetting. Yeah, it's just it's weird. Uh, Adult animations are hilarious, you know. Um. All right, so yeah, like I said, we had a meat fighter being set up. I think this saw Sands, man. So. Oh, this would be the first Sands I commentate. Can't believe we're seeing Sands before Kirby. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not surprised. <laughs> Sans is hype. <laughs> yeah, Sans is hype. Uh, I don't think you're you're required to play Gunner though. If you play Sans, right? You can you can change. I don't know how it works. I've never set up a me fighter in my life, man. You guys can blow me up for that, but uh, I don't know if he was playing Gunner. But either way, we'll find out in just a sec. Gunner is Gunner is one hell of a character. That's the de that's definitely the no fun allowed character, you know. If you're having a bad day, can you imagine just coming home, turning on Smash Ultimate, going online and seeing a me gunner? All right, no sands though. <laughs> no sand yet. I guess he's going to me sword fire. Looked like he was playing the the Krom, maybe I don't know. Is that Krom? That's Krom, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> why do they? Why is it? What? You know, I never really thought about that. To be quite honest with you. What? That he's both a me fighter and a uh, yeah. Character? So this just confirms that you know you could also just get a regular fighter. That I don't want to be a I don't mean like a hater or anything. I thought it was really weird that he's just a character at all. I think he's a really popular request, right? But like, so is Waluigi. That's true. By the time this game came out, I think Crom Crom's game was a couple years old at that point. Yeah, Awakening. Yeah, that's that's weird. <laughs> They're like, let's just give Lucina her parents in the game. Yeah. Put both of them in. <laughs> All right, you're right. Little Mac, it's the guy you were thinking about. <laughs> Little Mac versus Me Swordfire. Who would have thought? Who would have thought, Vicky? I am not surprised. All right, starting up the. I don't know what's happening. Another butt check? I, butt check part something two. may be going wrong. I'm just predicting that something's going wrong. Maybe not. All right, no, it is a button check. All right, I have no Maybe he had, it could have been that he was on the wrong tag. Honestly, didn't look what happened when they went back to the character select train. I think he saw the me sword fight, and he's like, nah, dude, I know you picked the wrong character, Max. All right, I'll, I'll <laughs> give you another chance. See, me sword fighter was one of those characters, especially at the beginning, where if you don't know how to play against this character, I the follow-ups from the tornado. Yeah, I actually think this character's not, like, that bad, but... I'll never admit that in person. You know? <laughs> uh, I played him for a while when so back uh, when the game first came out, there was a glitch where if you if you're mashing up B while you're holding shield, if someone touches your shield up, B would come out immediately. Yeah, I remember that. Oh yeah, my, yeah. that was I actually liked that low yeah, key. That, that was super cool. cool. I don't know why they got rid of that, but that actually made me sword fighter really really strong. He's a great up B, uh, not not the uh, the world blade that he steals from Link, but the other one, the um, uh, the. Sort of, sort of Ike one. I don't know, whatever you want to call it. But yeah, and his nair, his nair is pretty good. Tornado, like you said, is also very, very strong. Uh, tornado to up air yeah. is, a, is a kill confirm in some percents. The bread and butter that we would see commonly with this character. But at the same time, this is Little Mac, man. Do anything unsafe on top of him or trying to land onto this top of this character, you're going to be finding yourself taking a lot of damage. There and you go, yep. yep. There's a startup right there. 
going to be hard for Little Mac, I think, honestly. Uh, those disjoints coming out from the Sword Fighter. And he, he can't get hit by Tornado. You know, being in the air as Little Mac is obviously terrible. So even if he misses that up here, he's still in a very bad position as this character. Can't believe that. 2020, I'm commentating Little Mac versus. No, I actually think this character is, is low key scary. Oh, because of that! <laughs> I, <laughs> you yeah. know, that's actually not a confirm anymore. It's not, yeah, it's not real anymore. Yeah, but, it's not um, real anymore, but it, it still catches people off that. guard. And yep, what are you, that's, what are you that, scared that, about, Vicky? You know? <laughs> You get, Dude, when you he's get on KO the punch, stage. <laughs> you get KO punched and you sneeze on him, okay? Sneeze on him and that's the stop. Right. There you go, the follow-up once again. 45. Love it. Oh, but does Saibi right on front of him, though. Not going to get a cross-up and falls right into his jab. Oh, yeah. And falling, falling. Fair. Yeah, Sword Fighter is like 90% of the complete character, I feel like. 90%. I, I think he definitely has some things that are just like a little questionable, a little sus sometimes, but... Uh, for the most part, he has a lot of cool specials, a lot of great, great, like great things in neutral. I want to see more Nair. Where the Nair's at? Oh, he can't. <laughs> he parried it perfectly. What a punish! <laughs> I mean, that was the best punish. Yeah. There was no other, there was no other option. That kind of sucks. You know, he thought that he was gonna sneak in a little side B there and. Uh, I safe. thought he was going to honestly try to mix it up and like land on a platform or something, <laughs> but he landed in front of him. Like, even if that was shielded, that still has enough lag for him to just use the KO punch. Yeah. It's kind of a funny matchup, honestly. What are we watching? <laughs> yeah. I think, um, you know, I'm definitely not going to tell Combo how to play, but I think he can't really just be spacing them out with his, with his payers and neutral layers. He doesn't really have to approach him as much as he is. Patience right there, trying to catch the two frame with the down smash. This is really, yeah, this is when it gets scary. You can't get hit by anything at all. You know, last stock against Little Mac. Little Mac two stocking somebody, anybody. It's crazy. It's also just the bait in general. I mean, the, some things that haven't changed is super armor on the smash attacks. Yep. So uh, nice to note that if you do get baited into trying to punishing something that you know he throws out, which is what you saw right there, it looked like the up tilt. Um, you saw immediately that Kombu was trying to come in. And uh, try to punish him, and nope, not not in this house. Oh man, putting in his eye drops too. Like he really, <laughs> he's ready. He wants to make sure he doesn't miss anything. <laughs> that's why. Uh, that's why he lost the first match. You know, he couldn't really see. Little Mag was moving a little too much. So let me make sure I got those eye drops on deck too. Uh. The thing, yeah, the, you, the, I feel like a lot of little match, little Max matchups come down to does my opponent really know everything he needs to do to punish me? You know, and that. And while that's cool, you know, that'll, that'll take you pretty far. It's like, eventually you're going to meet that one person that does know, that doesn't know exactly what you mean. Then you get shut down at the end of your match, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah, again, I, I've, I've heard of uh, Gaia before. He's definitely the, the little Mac that he's he's placed within the top eight of Umabora before. Oh. oh, yeah. I'm definitely not disrespecting him. I, don't, I think he's an amazing little Mac player, but... And when they know how to utilize the tools that the character has, especially when it comes to people that just don't know how to play the character, or play against the character, sorry. I just um, feel like eventually the character's going to get shut down by someone who knows the matchup very well. It's also like, uh, just matchups as well. I can definitely see, uh, Lee Swords Fighter just doing pretty good against this character overall. I mean, when it comes to edge guarding, catching his landing right there, not going to let him uh, utilize the KO punch this time around. Uh, I wonder why this kind of thing maybe a little bit harder for Little Mac to recover from this stage. He was actually the first Lila I've seen. Wow, today. so much damage off of that small conversion. He definitely needed to use that counter to get back, but well, immediately utilized it down here right there. That was the perfect option for Kombu to go for. So that way, Gaio did not get back onto the stage for free. It was the eye drops, Vicky. I'm telling the you. <laughs> He's playing completely different now. We gotta, we gotta check those eye drops and make sure they didn't have anything funky in them. Try to do it for a second time in a row with a down smash. Now we see a uh, guy I'm maybe getting a little antsy. Doesn't want to get too far behind. Oh wow, actually, don't know if he just utilized the fact that I had super armor, so like, just cancel it. Like a mini focus attack coming up. Yeah. Back up. A little 
to slow pull the trigger on that down here. I guess be careful. Oh, Ooh. wow. And now KO Punch ready. And Kombu on his last stock. This is where the fear is instilled. Yeah, but can KO, he land? Yeah, KO Punch is uh, it's gone now. So now he's going to play a little bit more honest. Yeah, no, he's done. That was a very strong showing from Kombu's side. Definitely coming back from whatever the last game basically was. Mm -hmm. That's, but, you know, as a little Mac player, games are either like game number one or game number two, you know. Either either destroy your opponent without them even knowing what happened, or uh, I guess the same happens to you. You gotta have a strong heart to play a little Mac, I feel like. What do you think the counter pick's gonna be? I don't know, where does little Mac like to take people? Talent City? Okay. Can he even jump on those platforms? <laughs> It, you know, I, that was the he thing. A double in, jump. In, in Smash 4, though, there was some, uh, I think it was Battlefield, where you could single jump onto a platform. But Dreamland, you had to double jump onto them. So. Yeah, because of the height of the, of the platform. Yeah, so it's, I mean, little things like that definitely change uh, the Smash program. I was thinking it's funny how much bigger the Sword Fighter's head is than Little Mac's head. Like, so his head is half the size of his body. And gets a sliding up tilt. Definitely slowing down the pace here. A lot of walking. Trying to catch himself too at the same time. Not going to get hit by these tornadoes. Another parry, but not close enough to be able to get a utilized punish from it. Oh, he does try to go for the down air, but unfortunately mistimes it. Finding himself getting hit Ooh. instead, but great DI on Kombu's part. Even if, anytime I see Little Mac just side me off stage, I, you know, I see my life flash before my eyes. It's always scary. I know they can make it back a lot of a lot of things, but there was a video actually recently. Little Mac can make it underneath uh, the jump underneath Smash Bros. What? Yep, you can do it. Forward tilt, closing out the first stock, and has KO Punch on deck. Start off the second stock here. Nope, not anymore hat though. Yep, that tornado taking care of it. So that he could definitely use um, from afar, so that way he doesn't have to overextend whenever that KO punch is ready. Now that down air sending him in a quite, quite a horizontal angle, but not going to be able to take advantage of the fact that he was off stage, but still slipping in with that back air. Yeah, both players now wary, knowing their opponent has what it takes to uh, to get the W. So, like you said, a much slower pace match here. It was safer play from both, both players. Ooh, here we go, the double up tilt. Knowing that the third one won't connect, he decides to back off to see where he was going to go, predicting that he was going to be on the platform there. See that super armor at full effect. Oh, wow. Actually catching him because he did not take into shield right there, but at the same time, could have tech rolled back. And once again, KO Punch is going to be a little bit more safe here. Does not want to get clipped by a tornado. I want to see him just run underneath. Oh, but he actually approaches. Where yeah, is scared? He doesn't he, need to do that. He can just continuously throw the tornadoes. Want, he doesn't want to see the, the KO punch on deck anymore. Yep. He's doing whatever he can. Whatever he can to get rid of it. Yeah, it is weird though to see him approaching. He doesn't have to approach here at all. Oh wow, he's on his side, but he did not want to land right next to Gaia. Oh wow, he predicted that too. He just did it too early. Quite unfortunate and losing a stock because of that. But of course, Little Mac does not struggle on taking out stocks at the same time. Heavy hitter. Especially <laughs> if you're going to be side being into a shield. We've seen that so many times in this set so far, and it's got him punished so many times as well. I, I, it it works a few make. times for him where he could actually try to mix it up, but it, I feel like is he's it worth, gotten, Is it worth the risk, no, though? No, I feel like he's gotten punished way more than uh, being able to get away with it. Oh, just game. jumping right back into him. Yep. Yeah, avoiding that up tilt at least. Uh -oh. He does roll into that tornado and calling out the up air. He does go for the counter, but he's still off stage. This is not where he wants to be. Oh, and burning that KO punch, getting a little too greedy. I do like sometimes it's worth it to just do it, and sometimes it's worth it to wait until the right moment, you know? Oh, almost, a, almost a repeated situation of the last game right there, but nice delay from Kombu's part. Oh, 
he rolled back he, despite him throwing out the up tilt. Yeah, this is, I, honestly, Vicky, I'm on the edge of my seat here. Because yeah, uh, this is still anybody's game. Yeah. <laughs> Dash attack again. Little Mac with Raid, and all of a sudden he's racking up damage. You look at your percentage, and you're sitting at a oh, oh, yeah, perfect get -up spacing attack. on the get-up attack. That was a great match. We have some claps in, up in the crowd. Yeah, I think uh, the crowd was on Little Mac's side there. They were they're cheering for him, and uh, that was that was a hard one to watch, man. It's it's so scary, you know. I I feel like I'm playing Little Mac or playing <laughs> against Little Mac. I don't <laughs> it's yeah, it's always it's always scary just to, because you know it. He's the type of character that could really just come back, but he's also the type of character, as you mentioned earlier, that just absolutely gets destroyed if he's on the ledge. Yep. And that, in that situation right there, he was honestly just doing a really good job at staying neutral, but I feel like just carelessly with the KO punches and just getting rid of KO punches, um, he just wasn't really able to utilize what he had in the game one. Yep. Oof, one match, and uh, we got a couple more for you guys here at EVO Japan. 2020 and no a lot of you guys are good morning uh -huh. yeah, either waking up or still <laughs> still dead asleep it's like 4 or 5 a.m and it's okay. the west coast trust me man i'm from the west coast too and i know exactly how you're feeling <laughs> I'm, I'm still having a good time though every time every time i come to japan even though the first day or so is a little rough still i'm still in japan you know oh absolutely yeah no complaints here and i, I honestly have had so much fun watching all these sets that we've had no, yeah, nothing we, staling, nothing like that. We've had, I think, it's just the character variety here. Is yeah, so it's nice. refreshing. Uh, I love America, but man, play some fun characters, guys. <laughs> Please. <laughs> <laughs> I could definitely say I have uh, commentated certain matches for the first time today. Oh, yeah. Where I don't really get to see the Ryu character versus matches. Ken. That, was, that was nuts. Piranha Plant fight. versus Game Watch. Yeah. I, I actually haven't seen that <laughs> Even though it probably does see it more often, I just haven't seen that yet either. What do you think we're going to see this time, Mickey? Owl, Owl versus Kimi-san? Well, not too sure. Kimi-san does sound familiar, though. Owl looks like he's Evo staff as well. We saw we saw a couple of Evo staff entering the tournament. Moonlighting Hey, why not, right? Bit. It's free to enter. It's moonlighting. He's running his own bracket. That's what it is. <laughs> Guys, if you're enjoying the stream, make sure uh, make sure you're using that hashtag EvoJapan2020 on Twitter. And um, if you're just now waking up, grab a grab a cup of Joe. We got a couple more matches for you guys, and then we're gonna be uh, signing off. But I think Genesis is probably starting. I don't know, sometime soonish. Wait, what? Isn't it like? <laughs> well, wait, no, Gen I'm sorry, Genesis is on the West Coast. My bad. My bad. <laughs> wait, what? I know you said you said it was the morning, and I was thinking, but it's the East Coast morning. It's, it's not even that. I would say I think it's, it's it's like seven a.m., seven or eight a.m. on the on the east coast. Yeah, it's like seven thirty. Yeah. Even then, though, like, I don't think know Smashers what time are gonna wake up at seven thirty yeah, in the right, morning. You're right, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> you can barely get. You can barely get to their ten a.m. pools. You can have breakfast, okay? You can have breakfast and maybe uh, I don't know what you do on Friday. It's a Friday morning for you guys. I don't know, man. I'm sorry. It's Friday morning for you guys, yeah. Maybe read a good book. There'll be more Smash action coming at you guys. And players just setting up. So I, I kind of recognize Kimi-san's tag. Not too sure um, from where I did compile a good amount of notes earlier on the Japanese scene. So, Although Owl is definitely fresh to me. It's a good name, Owl. I mean, I, I do know there's like a melee player named Owl, so definitely. Same guy. Yeah, no, definitely not. One hundred percent. This dude, the other dude, <laughs> I'm thinking about is from Louisiana. <laughs> All right, they're uh, figuring out their stage. Looks like they've decided on something. I want to see the characters, though. That's what I'm really about. Again, guys, a couple more matches coming out. Oh, give me something good, guys. Random select, I'll take it. <laughs> Can you imagine running into someone who just mains yes, random select? Yes, 100%. <laughs> uh. mm. Okay, Bowser versus Joker, that's pretty, that's pretty crisp. This is something common. I'm talking about uncommon matches, but this is definitely something that uh, you would definitely see, usually. Really, I feel like not enough Bowser players. Even though he, really? got, he got buffed to hell. This is 
great character if you like heavies. But I don't see that many. Leon, I guess, you know. Yeah, of course, Definitely Leon. put in that work. There is the, there's always that one or two, um, you know, top top player. You know, Mewtwo King definitely messes around with this character more than other characters I've seen him uh, play with. I love this I, character. Uh, he, like, shook his head as if, like, this wasn't a button check. So I was like, wait. Yeah, that's what you got to do. You got to make sure you're on the SDs and then you say, what? This wasn't a button check. What the hell? <laughs> you look at like, yo, this was a button check this whole time, by the way. <laughs> Go ST. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be cheating there in button checks, yeah. I'm yeah. just trying to move on to bracket, man. You got to do what you got to do. It's 3,000 people here, okay? I'll do whatever it takes. <laughs> all right. Bowser versus Joker. I I personally haven't seen much much of this matchup at all. One of those evil shirts. Super Chris. But anyways, I definitely feel like in this matchup, I, Bowser could be struggling in just terms of uh, avoiding getting hit by a few things that Joker does have that could clip heavy bodies, or big bodies, I should, rather should say. Aside yeah. from the heavy boy that he is, the heaviest character in the game. I think downward gun is really going to be the anti Bowser here. Yeah, especially when he tries to recover. Uh -huh. Side B2, just being more susceptible to hit somebody as big as him too. Of course, the up B out of shield. Yeah, great damage, but you saw how much meter charging for Arsene. Everything's the double-edged sword against, against Joker, you know? Yeah, Arsene hits like Bowser. <laughs> Got mini Bowser right behind. I like that high recovery, going above the ledge to have that active hitbox out, so that way he can contest him from edge guarding him. Oh, that's the counter you were talking about. It's the hitbox is the entire screen. Okay, don't even. It's absolutely button. most covers so much of the ledge too. Unfortunately for Bowser, pretty linear when it comes to having to recover. It's the worst man getting clipped by Aga as your opponents get back to stage. I didn't ask for this 13%. And there's that gun down, preventing him from trying to contest him. Uh, I think he can... So if he's not doing something, if he's on the ground, though, I think he just walks through it because of his uh, big boy uh, tough armor. Guy. Tough guy. Tough yeah, guy. Big boy armor, I love that. <laughs> All I'm right. I'm like, what is it called again? Is it big boy armor? <laughs> tough guy. <laughs> That's great, man. And, of course, Joker's still living at 180. Who would have thought, man? You got a Bowser on your back. Things are not looking good wow. for, uh, for, for Al here. Yeah, absolutely not. And honestly, this is kind of what I expected of this matchup in general. Aside from the fact that uh, Kimi-san is definitely outplaying him, at least that side be coming through on the platform at such a high percent, nonetheless, still was going to take it. He was just absolutely running away with the damage output that he's putting on to Bowser. And then just utilizing Arsene at its best, especially with the backers that we saw off stage. That's what I was talking about earlier, you know? Like seeing a Joker just use probably his best tool when it could. Wow, getting the up B grab, Dude, dude. sending him straight back to him. Kimi-san has got his number, man. I don't know how, I don't know exactly how the Japanese numbers are formatted, but he's got the area code, he's got all the digits, <laughs> he's got everything, okay? That was, that was a. That was a dominant game number one for him. What do you do? What do you do from here, Vicky? Where, where do you even go? Uh, the Bowser was neutralized. He had even done up B out of shield a few times. Went for the side B. I guess it's just what you were talking about, too. The guns being a, a problem for Bowser overall uh -huh. uh, makes it difficult for you to try to punish an aggressive land on shield, um, which we did see a few times. That's yeah, Mario's problem, man. Mario's never using guns. That's why the princess keeps getting kidnapped. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> he uses water instead. Yeah, yeah, you gotta, you gotta get strapped up, Mario. That's how you take care of Koopa. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh, sorry. It's been a long day, Vicky. Okay. <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> this Fanta grape be hitting different. I'm telling you. <laughs> that grape Fanta. <laughs> it, tastes, it tastes like it tastes like it grape smells. juice. Actually. It smells from all over here. I'm smells. sorry. No, I no. I, mean, I don't care. Yeah. Grape, grape is fire. Game number two, let's see if uh, King Koopa's got a plan. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> there's your plan. Yeah. 
so much for that, I guess. Again, it's just the fact that the Bowser it has such a large hurt box in general because his model is so large. He's just more prone to getting hit by things like drag down up air. Especially with the platforms, I think uh, Pokemon, Pokemon Stadium uh, does provide you more of a leverage because it allows Joker to reset his jumps by landing on that platform and then setting up for more up airs. And there's that drag down. But giving it a hard time of getting back to the stage. Yeah, luckily Bowser's up B got, of course, super buffed oh, last yeah. game to this game. But still, you're taking the damage, you're kind of putting a scary situation off stage. Oh, come on, man. Come on, he Vicky. Reacts come on. To that. I'm I telling you, man, that counter needs from to From a mile away, I'm like, is this no way he's going to Bowser bomb here. Dude, aside from come the fact on. that it's, <laughs> he was able to react, he was able to cut himself some breakfast. And still yeah, he press that button. Man, that's crazy. That's really unfortunate too, because again, so much damage. Yeah, he lost the stock, and and that's really setting up the snowball for my boy Kimisan. Oh, he had air dodge. He's still managing to come back at least, and getting that back air. I like the, I like the jump call out, falling, yeah, falling back air. Yeah, Kimisan putting himself off stage to try to get that uh that impression right there, but unfortunately overextending and it causing him to lose that stock. I believe Vicky. I know you're usually the one to optimism, but I love Bowser. I love Bowser players Definitely, too, so. Of course, that, that's the one thing about Bowser is that he's a heavy hitter aside from a tank. So he could definitely not only just hold on to Rage whenever he can, but he could also just get one good back air in by the Blast Zone, and that could be it for Joker. Definitely Joker not even close to being that big boy that you see Bowser, but that down air sending him off to the side Joker downer not being the same as our send downer, but still having that horizontal knockback. Oh, I like that. I like that. Trying to bait out the opponent. He still went for the Bowser bomb afterwards. Yeah. I would never use that move again. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy though. You know, Gun has like zero recovery, so a lot of people unfamiliar with the matchup might try to punish like a downwards Gun towards the stage. Right. Wow. N enough time to use uh, that forward tilt into holding shield to avoid that up B out of shield. Oh wow, miss spacing that backer, but still getting the side B damage going on. Oh, that charged up Arsen half meter through. And landing right in front of him, giving him enough time to get that forward smash. I was gonna say I really like his usage of Bowser's side B to punish in certain situations and not have to worry about the about the uh, the counter. But it was just, it was just, I mean, I don't even know what this Akimi san was all over him. He had he had the right decision in every in every situation. You know? It happens. And at the same time, I feel like this Joker just a good job against Bowser. Yeah. You know, you saw him miss base the back air. Quite unfortunate there. But, you know, still managing to, to option select it to the side B just in case. Um, still wasn't enough. Just damage to rack up on, on Joker. Whether it be the forward smash or not, Arsene was about to come out. And in that moment, it doesn't really matter how heavy you are. Yeah, and a lot of things that Bowser does, a lot of those multi-hits coming out from, like, up B or his... Uh, yeah, whatever, whatever he'd do with his multi-hit, he just, just charging that R centimeter even more and more and more, so. Oh, well, I mean, that's kind of what I expected, but I didn't think, geez, I didn't think he would just take him over like that. Definitely happens, and, and it definitely was trying to, to try to mix himself up, but it just, at one point, you know, how far can you really go? And that's kind of what we saw there, but, you know, it's also kind of late, so. All right, guys, we, we have made it. We have made it to our last match of the first day of Evil Japan 2020. Last match in Smash. And I know you guys, some of you guys are just now waking up. Must Believe be nice. Believe it or not. Yeah, it must be nice. <laughs> <laughs> but Believe it or not, we've been going all night. All, while you've been cuddled in your bed, taking a good, good, having a good night's rest, we've been here grinding away at this 3,000-man bracket. And we did it. We're at the last match of today. Today, of course, got Haruka versus Shin Goro. Two more Japanese players here to uh, show their their prowess. I like that word, prowess. prowess. No I one mean, uses it. Oh, they don't use it enough. Yeah. At least from today, the amount of matches that we've been able to see, I would say that tomorrow is definitely going to be interesting. Narrowing it down to 700-plus uh, players, I believe, left in bracket. Yeah. Until we actually just break it down all the way to, the, to what's left of the top eight. So being able to filter out a lot of the players, I've been able to get out of pools. I believe 
top three did make it out. I feel like uh, Viram had confirmed that earlier too. So That's crazy, man. They, tomorrow's going to be a long day for these players too. You know, if you're going to make it to top eight, that's a lot of matches. But, I mean, I, I, I keep saying that, but obviously, what are you going to do? A 3,000-man bracket, there's no way to just run that quickly. You know, it's, it's going to be long days for – everybody honestly so. shout out to the tournament for having i think they had like over 100 setups here they were breezing through what i saw today and i was really impressed because on average i'm, I'm used to tournaments just running very late and you know just to know it is only 9 30 here and this tournament started mean, at 9 th you mean it's only 7 30 a.m <laughs> stop <on the laughs> East Coast. i guess local was you know there's oh it's only 9 30 here for the local players um coming from the different parts of japan but also the fact that uh, this tournament started at 9.30 in the morning. Yep. So I think that's pretty good timing overall for a tournament that has a 3,000-man bracket finishing up day one. Oh, and what a day one it's been, Vicky. And uh, again, like I said, we finally made it. And these players are – everybody's everybody's looking taxed, you know. Everyone's ready. Also really excited. Production. I saw a dude just sleeping over there on the production line. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Is Viram asleep? Yeah, he's done. Yo, what? Can we get a camera on Viram, please? <laughs> oh, no. We, we shouldn't do that. <laughs> Aw. <laughs> he's sleeping. Come he's on, like bro. us. It's hey, okay. No one's judging, man. No one's judging. Take a nap, dude. I wish I was in your seat right <laughs> Me now, Me too. <laughs> in fact, you want to trade We're all on you. board with you. We're all on board. <laughs> Lucario versus DDD to close out day what? number one. I love it. Let us go. This is the this Smash is the Ultimate <laughs> Classic. The most storied <laughs> matchup between two characters. That we never see <laughs> in our lives. Anyways, that's why he's playing the black and white DDD. Yep. He's a classic. It's a classic, yep. I feel like this is the perfect touch to ending today's stream, too. Oh, yeah. With it's, the amount of different I character variety that we've been seeing on better. stream all day, the way to close out this stream is by having King DDD versus Lucario. I feel like this is going to be a good taste to starting up tomorrow as well. This is going to be the same matchup we see tomorrow morning. First matchup of the day. Lucario versus King DDD. All right, guys. Again, if you've been sticking with us all night, or where, whatever it is for where you guys are at, this is the last one, the last set. And you can all go eat your breakfast. Or I don't know what you guys do. Thank you for sticking with us, though. Make sure to support both major smash events this weekend or however many i don't know if there's three i don't know if there's four but i know two i know of course even japan and genesis game number one haruka versus shin goro i don't even know what to say here yeah, and definitely not something I, I don't see very often to be honest yeah how do you feel about this matchup on paper you know? um lucario has lost some of the stuff that he used to be able to run away with in, in the last game um, I feel like that's why we hadn't seen anti use Lucario as much as um, he had used from the beginning to now. But it's quite interesting to see because uh, we have seen this character definitely come back from the fact that some people just don't know how to play against him, especially when he does the B reverse charge Aura Sphere into, yeah. you know, he used to be able to do up smash, but not anymore. Um, as well as the fact that Aura Sphere does push away Gordos, Gordos shouldn't be a problem if he plays patiently. And he is looking pretty crisp with his B reverses too. The unfortunate thing is that he's such a big character, it's going to be very hard for him to avoid those, those Aura Spirit charges. Oh, trying to call it on the neutral getup, but gave um, Shingoto enough time to react to that. But, wow, he went Just far. Just countering that Gordo for no reason. All right, wow. Closed out that first stock quickly with the forward smash. And uh, Haru, honestly, sorry, Shingoro hasn't really got much started here. Only 67% on Lucario. Some straight hits here and there. Oh, he does try to contest him right there with the inhale to exhale. Try to follow up in the air, but unable to get much. Honestly, Haruka just looking extremely strong. He really went off stage to try to contest him there. You see Shingoto going for the high recovery. Oh, I like the bait right there. You saw him try to charge the Aura Sphere by the ledge and then cancel it immediately to try to cover roll just in case. 
Man, Aruka's being very aggressive. He wants <laughs> he knows he's the last match today. He's trying to get out of here, dude. Another bait. You saw him try to charge the Aura Sphere. Called out the jump with the back air. Man, he, uh, this is looking very similar to the last match we just watched where one player very clearly has the other one's number. Uh, it's, it's even worse, though, because instead of Arsene, he's getting that Aura Charge. All right. Yeah, not anymore, though. Starting from scratch, not needing to worry about Aura being charged up. Yeah, although that Aura Sphere is a different case, taking care of the Gordos. Oh, he does get the up tilt into not, unfortunately, not landing the up air, though. Yeah, you know, you get, even though you know your opponent can reflect your projectiles, you still gotta play your game here. Don't be too afraid to throw your projectiles, even against reflectors and, and absorbs. Oh, that goes for that, that footstool. Yeah, that's the gamer attack right there. You watch, <laughs> gamer. The, you watch the gamer video. Always. <laughs> waste your waste your second jump and try to footstool up. Smash jump as fast as you can. <laughs> you can't catch me. I'm the jump man. I love gamer <laughs> dog. Gamer's wild, man. Oh! Okay. The, the mix of Yo, Tanobis. He's yeah. back in this game. Yeah, he absolutely is. And that was fantastic. He actually, it seemed as if he actually waited to use that until the very end when it yeah, mattered. Yep. I don't know how many more times that's going to work. It's an option, though. It's an option for sure. Something that's on board that now uh, Haruka is going to have to look out for. We're trying to land with a fair into dash attack. How much faster Lucario is than DDD? He's struggling to keep up with this movement. By the way, he's trying to mix up his landing with the jumps too. Does get the exhale on him. And he's about to get this life lead after being down two stocks. That's crazy. Oh wow! Call out the roll. Pretty really good timing on it. Not gonna get much as uh, Shingoto does go for the spot dodge. Oh, still gets hit on the other side of stage. Wow, the mix up, but he actually crossed it, but he actually doesn't get much off of that. A little too slow on the punish for the side B there. Oh, was able to slowly. That's how slow that roll was. I can't believe these Rams went back, though. This is crazy. Oh, no. I that was like it. Should have been it. Aris are coming through. Be careful, man. He tries to. Oh, my. He tries to Bruh. make it out. He, he knows. They're playing chicken with it, each other. He's like, oh, wait. <laughs> They just keep doing it, man. Yeah, no, it's it's instilling the fear too. You could see Haruka changing it up, <laughs> not even charging it as much. I mean, he does have it fully charged right now. This is so wild. <laughs> he saw it the first time. Was like, wait. Gets the get up attack. Of course, the invincibility preventing him from getting hit by the multi hits of the aura sphere. Oh, nice the initial get up. Gonna even hit multi go through the aura sphere. Wow. And back yep. air closing out game number one. What a turnaround, Vicky. What a turnaround. Don't need the first two stocks when you got inhale to exhale aura sphere. Sorry. Yeah, the game definitely changed as soon as he did that, you know? Yep. Yeah, and again, I feel like that was a, a pressure tool that he was specifically saving up to use until the very end when it mattered the most. And now he used it against Haruka. All right, let's see if, uh, let's see if it was a gimmick or, you know, a real, just a real thing. Can he do it two more matches? See you looking around, Vicky. Everybody else is done here I except for I actually didn't know. <laughs> I wasn't sure. I was like, it's so quiet suddenly. What Very happened? Very important to remember all the trains stopped running at 12 a.m. So <laughs> my, <laughs> my commute. You guys will take me to the whole time. I'm, cu okay. I'm cutting it close here, guys. <laughs> okay. Now we're totally good. I'm about to get stuck at a random train station. <laughs> it's a two-hour walk to my hotel. <laughs> <laughs> My god, alright, game number two here, Lucario. Day to day. I believe man. I you know I thought I thought it was over for DDD. I thought it was gonna quick be a quick two on a handshake, but now I don't even know. Cool. I don't even know. I don't even, I don't even know what to believe anymore, because you see strings like that and you see DDD get two hits and he's back in there. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean the damage output obviously being completely different between the Bowser that we saw last stream and DDD in this stream course. These are two uh, big heavy boys that definitely deal so much damage, but you know, as the aura racks up, you got Lucario to worry about too in terms of knockback. Oh, the run up grab, seeing that he was stuck in shield right there, maybe predicting that he was going to go for a charge aura sphere. Now honestly, the charge aura sphere isn't working as consistently. 
so it's nothing your opponent has to worry about, you know, even if it's not a... <laughs> wow, that was fantastic. That was the first time we see him try to bait that out, too. You see him charging the R-Sphere and just holding it the whole time into the side B. Yeah, I think part of the, part of the crazy thing is that you can just hold it as long as you want. Yeah, like when it's fully charged, you know, you don't have to necessarily just get out of it automatically. You can actually just keep it there on purpose. For the sake of the multi-hits too, which totally makes sense. Up throw into Nair. I like that keep he's not even playing anymore. He's just charges or his this game has changed. Completely. Oh wow, he actually missed space that. Quite unfortunate, but try to get back into the stage safely with the recovery option, but you know, Shinguro was able to actually react to that, turn around and grab. Every time he fires off that over sphere, you never know what that inhale might come out. I, I, I honestly don't know, even know what to say anymore because you know this is looking very similar to game number one, but Shingoro was able to come out on top, so I think this is a pretty good stage for Lucario. Of course, he's gonna be able to get that wall cling if he needs to, and of course, those platforms above the uh, above the ledge is making so Gordo's can't really do the thing they, they, they usually do. Wow, Nair. Yeah, but Nair, yeah. Nair able to at least take the first stock. And of course, we have already seen that DDD has no problem coming back when it comes to damage output. I'll throw into up air. Long back here, yep, again. Oh, oh, oh the what air happened? Dodge. Did he air dodge? Yeah, oh. he did. He air dodged way too close uh, to the blast zone there. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Well, again, he's been in this situation uh, before. And he hasn't used inhaled yet, by the way, on Aura Sphere. Not this game, at least. He waits to use it when it really matters. He's definitely put the fear in, in Haruka, though. He's not firing them off as early nilly as he was before. He's not out, and this is crazy. Just one good, uh, one good back here near the edge of the stage. I'm gonna slowly, the change in, in uh, leads actually are declining here for uh, Shingoto. Kind of fortunate. Up tilt, that would have KO'd in Brawl. Oh, <laughs> oh man. unfortunately, just forward smash on the wrong Shingoro, side, what though. Happened? Oh wow, he saw that he was going to go for the getup attack as he did get punished for that earlier. Cordo completely getting demolished. Oh, and all his getup options just getting called out as well, man. This is hard. Able to air dodge through that Aura Sphere. Aura Sphere is kind of a slow moving projectile, so it's kind of hard to air dodge through it. Yeah, in general, too, Haruka isn't just using it as an active hitbox, but as a movement option as well. Shifting his momentum around uh, Shingoto so that way he can mix up on the shield. So it's still not KOing. Now he's, call, he's called out the spot. Now he's called out so many options. Another roll towards stage. Yeah, this should definitely be it. Despite being a big heavy boy, that is going to be game two. Changing ah. it up, I mean, now we got a 1-1 situation. Completely different different way of what we saw with the with game one. That's honestly how I expected game number one to end. And in all fairness, like that's probably how it should have ended. But uh, I like how Shingoro kind of fighting against fate. Yeah, I also think it could be tricky on Kalos um, to contest Lucario. Uh, he, he, you're talking about the platforms in Gordo. Well, Gordo overall wasn't really helping him in that instance, but aside from the uh, accidental air dodge, he did lose his stock pretty early too. Yep. Right. So what you're saying is it's still anybody's game here. Absolutely. I love the optimism. <laughs> always, I always. I don't know if I have the same optimism, but I just love the UD. So, <laughs> I believe. At, at this stage could be a little tricky too when it comes to the, the slants and Gordos. Yeah, I think uh, it makes it makes Gordo predict kind of hard to predict where it's gonna go. It's going deep. Yeah, we saw that earlier too, trying to go for that downer deep too. It's scary man, I've seen a lot of DD players mess up their recovery on the stage. I know it's his counter pick, but it's still possible for him. Um, they can put in a weird situation. Oh, another thing to know is he definitely reaches those platforms, so you've got to be careful with the way you land. But honestly, the way that Haruka is moving, I don't think that's going to be a problem, especially since he has been shifting his momentum, as I mentioned earlier, with his own neutral beam. 
He does get hit by this up air though. Not gonna try oh gets yep. hit by the Gordos and saying not gonna try to contest it, yeah. The uh the weird angles of the lilac gonna make the Gordos a little bit harder to predict. Yeah, that's why I'm not too surprised with this counter pick. Wow. Such a flashy way to just freeze the screen. Kind of knock. <laughs> nice going deep again for that KO. Yeah, nice. getting that down air. Nice. Again, finds himself on one stock, but an idiot. Incredibly heavy hitter. It's also Aura on Lucario's side here too. That's why you see him glowing. That was a misinput, sending Aura Spirit in the wrong direction. Yeah. Not gonna be able to get that grab right there. Shingoto's been doing a pretty good job at trying to get out of uh, the charge Aura Spirit fear hitbox. Really, uh, the name of the game for Shingoro really struggling to find the KO here when it really oh, wow. matters. The patient on the ledge there really helping Shingoto out to prevent him from getting hit anymore, at least racking up the damage that he definitely does not need while he's down a stock. Wow, the. No! The way! period, no punish? Alright, well. Oh, and the counter is gonna close out another stock. Things are looking very bad for Shingoro, but again, he's been in the situation before. I mean, but the Aura, the Aura DC, now, yeah. now is the time where it's, he's gonna be. He's gonna be although he is at early. Per, all right, here we go. I was gonna say, he is at early percent, so he's not like he has to worry necessarily with the knockback in the situation, but he doesn't take care of it soon, and he definitely did right now. Oh, man. It's just not, it's not working out in his favor again. It seems like. When things are bad, things are terrible. You know, every decision you make is the wrong one. Your Although this, this pressure, this pressure right here on these platforms. So dealing a good amount of damage. Finally, we see the inhales coming out. Some trying to set himself up for the back air, but not feeling like it was going to work at that time as uh, Haruka was delaying it. And oh wow. my! Wow! Is he going to do it again, Vicky? Yo, yo, he's hearing you, man. He's trying to, he's trying is to prove he you wrong. Is he going to do it again? Let's talk about the fact that that dash check conferred with the Gordo to add in that extra damage. Like, <laughs> what? All right. Well, he still has a little bit of a life deficit to climb here. 80% zero on Lucario. Very least doesn't have to worry about a ton of aura. No, absolutely not, but does force him to use she Oh, wow, and actually sending the Gordo back despite him um, inhaling it to send it back. Yeah, he's trying to, he's looking to, to do some of his uh, his tricks here on this final stock of this, this final match. Uh, forcing him to shield this time. Giving him a little taste of his own medicine with the Gordo charades. Oh, nice. actually goes to the roll. Okay. Uh, not able to punish that counter, unfortunately. But you see he's playing a little different here. Oh my goodness, I would be so scared out of my mind if I was Haruka. Another up air connects. Still struggling. Counter. Oh! That looked like the, the side of Lila acting a little strange right there. It actually looked like the incline like didn't allow that to, to connect. Dude, both players just need one good hit here. Oh, Gordo through! What an explosive final game that we have here. My goodness. On day one, where are you going? Both players, one hit away. No, 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 oh, no punch does not get hard smash. punish for it. When is the Aura Sphere coming out, Vicky? Oh, oh my gosh. Again, he... through. Oh, no. Ah. Spot dodge. <laughs> oh, and that is going to be enough. No, and he pops up. What an amazing final set we had here, Vicky. Oh my goodness, that was crazy. That was nuts. <laughs> Bruh, I got no nails left. I was by, I was on the edge of my seat, biting my nails, sweating like PB and J. That, that was crazy. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh my goodness, that was a great. That was a great set to uh, to close us out there. I thought he was gonna run it back. It was so scary. Both players. <laughs> he was down too. Like yeah, was, this was literally a replica of game one. What was that? He, when his back is to the wall, he starts. Uh, you know, he unlocks his persona. It's exactly what, uh, <laughs> it's what Joker Gordo. does. It's like a gigantic Gordo the behind him, like Gordo Kirby Air Ride. Him, yep. <laughs> <laughs> the gigantic Gordo. Wow. Dude, that's literally the energy that I felt through DDD. Oh my god. That was absolutely insane. That Amazing was stressful. gameplay. That was stressful to commentate. Amazing game from both those players, and I feel like that was a very appropriate way to end day one on that game three note. 
Guys, thank you so much for tuning in and joining us here on day one of EVO Japan 2020. We we're made gonna it. Be, we're we going to be it. signing off for right now, you guys. But catch some more action happening tomorrow. If you thought the matches were hyped today, wait until you guys see tomorrow. We are breaking it down all the way until we get to the top eight for to showcase to you guys a fantastic top eight showing on Sunday. So thank you guys again for tuning in, and we hope to see you tomorrow. This is Vicky Kitty, guys. Peace out, homies.